Blog Talk Radio. Here we go. Blast off. This is True Capitalist Radio. True Capitalist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of business. Give him capitalism or give him death. That's it. Period. Broadcasting from his Skylight Office Studios in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, for Christ's sake. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the prognosticator of prognosticators, the man they call... Ghost. Good God, folks. Look, my apologies, folks. Am I on the air here, for Christ's sake? Jesus Christ. What the hell's going on here? Hello? Hello? Testes, testes. Hello? Testes, testes. One, two. Testes. Testes, one, two, three. Am I, am I on the air here? I just want to know if I'm on the goddamn air. I mean, good God, folks. Listen, I don't know what the hell happened there, folks. I, I don't know what's going on here. I mean, sh- you know, what I, What the hell was that? What the hell was that? Anyway, folks, for you folks that are unaware here, if you're just tuning in to us in the podcast, we have not been able to contact or get in contact with the bland blog talk radio service for the past 13 14 minutes i thought i was gonna have to goddamn cancel the show for christ's sake and i just uh i'm glad that uh you know blog talk radio got you know whatever it needed to whatever it needed to do it got to it all right Jesus Christ, man, 15 minutes in the goddamn broadcast, dead air, for Christ's sake. I hope that's not on the damn podcast pre-recording. And look, I'm hearing a chopper. You hear that chopper? Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that crap? I'm telling you, I don't know what the hell's going on here. I don't know what the hell's going on. Leave me alone. Why don't you all just leave me alone? I got choppers over my house for Christ's sake. I don't I don't know if this thing I don't know if I'm on the air. I don't know what's going on here, folks. What a what a weird I don't know what kind of an entrance that was, folks. There's choppers over my house over here. I don't know what the hell's going on. Hold on. Oh, give me my give me the mic. I don't know what's going on here, folks. I got choppers over the house. I couldn't connect to the damn blog talk radio server. I, I, I mean, it seems like I'm being censored. There's some some level of intimidation when I got when I contacted the server. Not only could I not contact it through the computer, they have an option to where you could call into the damn you know some number and you can actually you know broadcast that way. I had all kinds of weird messages from all kinds of different voices. I had the typical uh, female robotic chick. Uh, this call couldn't be dialed as... And then I had something that sounded like big smoke or something. Like, uh, this call couldn't be done as dialed. I mean, what the hell? I don't know what the hell's going on here, folks, but the bottom line is I don't like it. I don't like it one goddamn bit. Oh, jeez. There's a chopper over my house. Do you hear this crap? There's a chopper. Listen. It's circling over my house. Jesus Christ, man. Come here, Tem- Templeton's freaking out. Come here, Templeton. Oh, my God. Anyway, folks, this is episode number 435. 
episode number 435 for all the folks that are keeping track of the True Capitalist radio broadcast. My apologies here. Uh, I mean, Temp- Templeton's crying. What's wrong, Templeton? You okay? What's wrong with Templeton? You're scared? Don't be scared, Templeton. Don't worry about it, all right? Don't be shaken. Everything's okay. Uh, even Templeton's a little spooked. It's okay, Templeton. I don't know what the hell's going on here, folks. What a, what an entrance to the show. Before we get started, please spread this show around like wildfire right now, because I don't know what the hell's going down here. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, anything is possible at this point in time. I don't put anything past anybody anymore. Anyway, go over there, Templeton. It's okay. It's okay. Come over here. Here, let's go get in your bed. I'm sorry, folks. Templeton's freaked out. He's shaking. You okay, Templeton? What's wrong with you, all right? It's all right. Go ahead and get over there. It's all right. I'm doing the show. I'm doing the show. Get over there. That's a good boy. Anyway, folks, I don't know what the hell's going on here. Templeton's, like, literally sitting right next to me. He's scared. Jesus Christ, man. Got the ghetto bird flying over, for Christ's sake. Templeton's shaking. I got to do a broadcast. I'm 15 minutes late. I couldn't contact the server for whatever reason. I don't know if I'm being silenced. I don't know if I'm, I don't know what the hell's going on here. There's a chopper. I can still hear this chopper. What the hell's a chopper doing over my ass? I'm telling you, if, they, if that chopper keeps flying around, I, I might take a pop shot at it. I'm not even joking, all right? I'm not even joking. I'm going to aim for a propeller or something. I'm not even kidding around. Get away from my house! Anyway, folks, my apologies here. I don't know what the hell's going on. This is episode number 435. Before we get into anything else, please spread it around like wildfire. The True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house. And we are live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on the official website of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. I don't know if it's still up. I don't know what's going on here. But it is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And, of course, if you have not done so, please follow me on Twitter, folks. The Twitter name to follow is Politics Ghost. All one word, no underscores. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. Of course, you can also find me on Gab, which is the Twitter alternative, folks. All right, that particular address is the same as Twitter, so go ahead. Politics goes, follow me right now, all right, boy, because who the hell knows what's going to happen. <sighs> anyway, I think uh, it's getting a little weird out here, so let's just go ahead and get right to the freaking broadcast. I don't have too much time, thanks to whatever technical difficulties Blog Talk Radio was having, for Christ's sake. All right, I don't even have enough time to take these sons of bitches to the woodshed. i got to get right to the goddamn markets. All right, anyway, let's go ahead and get to stocks. And as we stated, folks, uh, you know, we're going to see some helter-skelter in the market because I don't really think that the investors in this particular market know what the hell they're doing. They don't know where the hell to go. You're seeing dismal earnings, for Christ's sake. I mean, Target just released dismal earnings Basically, once again, solidifying consumer sentiment being not necessarily as high as they're trying to claim out here. Moreover, folks, the only thing that is bringing some of these index composites alive is these financial earnings. I mean, of course banks are going to have great earnings. They're the ones ripping us off. I mean, we're paying these people to hold our own money. You know that? Ridiculous. But aside from that, folks, I mean, lots of uncertainty. Janet Yellen came out today. I think that she had to after Donald Trump's comments on the uh, dollar being too valuable. And we talked about this yesterday in that the dollar is a tad bit too valuable because we got a lot of over-speculation going on. Part of it has to do with the uncertainty in Europe and other foreign markets, and others has to do with just over-speculation in that people are accumulating dollars and sitting on it. I mean, they're seeing the value going up, and at the same time, when you got the Federal Reserve talking about raising interest rates, uh, you know that the value of the dollar is going to go up. Well, Janet Yellen came out today and basically said, listen, it doesn't matter how many interest rate hikes we're going to have throughout the year, 
uh, we're not going to go any more than 3% by 2019. So that gives the people a little bit of an idea. It gives investors, it gives a lot of folks a little bit of an idea of what we're looking for as it pertains for the next two years economically. So we're not going to go past that 3% point by 2019. Although the Federal Reserve is known to change its mind, uh, and of course it changes its mind based upon the economic productivity or lack thereof in the United States, uh, I think that this particular Federal Reserve is hawkish on the Trump administration. Uh, they know that they have a, a whole bunch of ca uh, competent capitalists that are a part of the administration, and as a result, uh, you got Mnuchin out here basically going out on all the business channels stating that the objective of his particular economic policy is to increase GDP growth at a sustainable 4%. And if we can get uh, g sustainable GDP growth at 4%, I think that that's what it's all about. All right? That's what it's all about, baby. Because if we get 4% GDP growth, I mean, I think that we're going to see a flourishing economy and a flourishing economy that gives an opportunity to all to be prosperous, more ample opportunity for new wealth to be generated. I mean, this is uh, serious business. So that's why you see the Federal Reserve and Janet Yellen coming out today stating that you're not going to see any more than 3% by 2019. So that's a breath of fresh air as far as I'm concerned because we can at least basically, at least for today's words from the Federal Reserve, basically kind of calm our asses down and realize that we're not going to see 5 or 10% or any of that kind of ridiculous nonsense that we've seen in years past. So uh, it's very good news. Uh, so, you know, it, with that being said, uh, that's kind of what brought up the markets to a certain capacity today was Janet Yellen's remarks but at the same time, it was pretty flat. It closed out pretty flat, so let's just go ahead and get to it right now. Dow Jones Industrials down today 22.05 points, a percentage decrease of 0.11%, closing out the Dow Jones Industrials at 19,804.72 points for the Dow Jones Industrials. We've got the S&P up very modestly today. It was up four points. A percentage increase of 0.18%, closing out the S&P at 2,271.89 points for the S&P 500. We've got the NASDAQ. It is also up slightly today, miraculously, up 16.93 points, a percentage increase of 0.31%, closing out the NASDAQ at 5,555.66 points for the NASDAQ composite. Now, even though we're seeing this kind of supposed modest green on certain index composites, not much volatility happened in this market, folks. If you've been pattern or day trading, you know what I'm talking about. Not too many uh, dips, not too many waves out here, very short and choppy waves. You're lucky if you're able to get at least five maybe 10 cents on a share if you happen to be in a lucky situation on some of these particular stocks out here. It's very, very hard, and the reason is is we're having low volume as it pertains to trades. Very low volume out here. And when we have low volume, that means there's not that many investors buying. And when there's nobody buying, that means that you're not going to see those dips and waves. Because as I stated, folks, when you're day trading, and you hold a stock and you buy it at 10 bucks and it goes up to about 1050 and you sell off at 1050 uh 15 minutes later that 50 cents per share doesn't magically come out of nowhere it doesn't come out of the air all right that's coming out of some other investor's pocket that believed that it was okay to invest in that particular stock at $10.50 or $10.30 $10.40 so on and so forth so when you don't have people buying stocks in the stock market, it's very, very precarious in the pattern or day trading angle of trading strategies. Uh, right now, in my personal opinion, I'm trying to do a little bit of day trading. I'm not focusing in on it at this point in time because I personally believe that just the low volume 
it just speaks for itself. I think that any kind of bad news could basically take this damn market into a header. When you have low volume and not too many people buying in the stock market, all it takes is one bad, one bad triggering of the market for it to just start selling off. And that's the bad part about not having a lot of buyers in today's market, folks, because, I mean, one bad news, something, something bad happens, it could trigger a major sell-off out here. And all the people that are right now basking in their 401Ks, basking in their portfolios, basking in their retirements, looking at 18,000, 19,000 Dow Jones Industrial, you need to realize that this is very temporary here, all right? It's going to contract. Now, to what extent is going to contract, we shall, it, 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 we shall see. Because, I mean, there's a variety of different factors on how much it can contract, what can happen, how long it will happen. Uh, we shall wait and see. And that's why I am very, very interested in seeing right off the bat when Donald Trump takes office. In two more days, man, two more days. When Donald Trump takes office, I want to see this man's tax plan. You know, I want to see the things that he suggested in this campaign. I, I'm talking about a $1 trillion investment in America infrastructure. Uh, I'm talking about uh, a small business association uh, is going to start, uh, you know, providing opportunities for small businesses to flourish with low interest rate loans, if not grants. All right, I'm talking about, I'm, I'm not joking around, low taxes, incentive to create employment, incentive to expand, that's what I'm waiting for, baby. I'm waiting for that, and I'm waiting for the contraction, because when the contraction happens, I'm going in, baby. I'm going in. I'm gobbling up as many blue chip and dividend stocks as possible. High-paying dividends. For you folks that don't know what dividends are, it's one of those stocks that you buy, and when you hold it, every quarter you basically get a check for a certain amount of money per share that you own of that given company. All right? So that's why I'm saying, man, that I'm just gobbling up. I'm, I just can't wait. I can't wait. I can smell it coming. All right? There's nothing sustaining these levels in the market, man. I'm telling you. Is your garage full of old paint that you'll never use? I know mine is. Avocado green, hot pink, antique white. That is a nice shade of white, though. You know, it's easy to recycle your paint all over California. Keep what you need and recycle the rest. Find a drop-off site near you at paintcare.org. Anyway, folks, with that being said, let's go ahead and get to commodities, shall we? Now, uh, let's get to energy. Now, folks, we are seeing some weird things happening in energy because, as I stated, I don't trust OPEC anymore. I don't think OPEC has any kind of credibility. I don't think it can regulate itself. And the reason I suggest that is because the Saudis seem to be lying about their production cut, according to reports out here. And, moreover, we got some of the shale oil producers uh, continuing to produce outside the realm of OPEC that is bringing down the costs of oil. So we got a lot of competitors in the oil game, baby. You know what I'm saying? So by default, we're bringing down the cost of oil, whether or not these damn uh, Arab cartels want to bring it up or not. <laughs> Woo! And I'm loving this cheap oil, loving this cheap gas, and I'm telling you, when Donald Trump's elected president, he is going to open the domestic production of oil and energy, folks, which is going to not only bring down the cost of gasoline even more, which I can't wait to see those costs of gasoline, a dollar a gallon, 98 cents a gallon. Don't think it won't happen, folks. If we, if we produce our own domestic oil, it'll happen sooner than you think. All right? We are in the possession of some of the greatest refineries in the world, and not to mention we've got Exxon CEO as our Secretary of State, this is a capitalist revolution, folks. I'm telling you, when we open up our, our, our oil production capabilities, we are going to create so many jobs. And on top of that, we are going to be able to sell this oil on the world market so we can produce for America, so we can produce taxes that will bring down the cost of this debt. We'll be doing all kinds of things, man. And not to mention the energy prices are going to go down, your electric bills. You know, that have been going through the roof thanks to Obama's war on coal. 
And that's another thing that Donald Trump is going to open once again, our coal domestic production capabilities. All right, we've got clean coal capabilities. And why it's not electrifying our cities at this point that are dependent on technological widgets and gadgets, I have no idea. But mark my words, Donald Trump will uh, open up oil production. It's going to be a great goddamn thing, all right? <laughs> Anyway, let's get to energy. As I stated, uh, we're seeing Saudi basically go against the OPEC's agreed deal of cutting production. And the reason is is the Saudis really need money, folks. I mean, they're not in very good shape. They have never been a fiscally responsible uh, dynasty because they always thought that oil was going to be plethora and people were always going to buy it. And there was never going to be any other domestic or, excuse me, international producers. Well, that time has come to where that assumption is coming back to haunt them. Here recently, they just injected I don't know how many billions of dollars into their own banking system. I'm talking Saudi Arabia, just so that they could keep it solvent. That just goes to show you how desperate they are for money. And as a result, we're seeing it. The reports are coming out. Saudi Arabia is overproducing the agreed OPEC uh, production cuts, and I think it's doing it out of pure desperation, folks. They need the money, and this is what's bringing down the market on top of the shale oil producers that are also selling a lot of this oil for cheap prices as well. They're making a big dent in the oil industry. So let's get to energy. WTI sweet crude is down today, a dollar nine, a percentage decrease of 2.08% decrease on the day, closing out WTI at $51.39 per barrel of WTI sweet crude. We've got Brent crude also down today, folks. Everything took it on the teeth in the energy sector, man. It is down a dollar twenty-four, a percentage decrease of 2.24% decrease on the day, Closing out Brent crude at $54.23 per barrel of Brent crude oil. We've got gasoline also going down today, folks. 3.42% decrease on the day for gasoline. Natural gas also down today in this feast or famine commodity. Natural gas is down 2.73% decrease on the day. We've got heating oil also down 1.73% 1.73% decrease on the day. Let's go ahead and get to commodities, shall we? Now, what brought down commodities today slightly was the Federal Reserve ch- uh, Chairman's uh, or Chairwoman's response to Donald Trump saying that the dollar may be a little too valuable. Uh, quickly today, Yellen came out and just asserted that, look, okay, we're not going to increase interest rates that high given the fact that we have a bunch of overspeculation on the U.S. currency based upon people holding it uh, with the intention of it getting valuable. We've got outside investors in foreign markets uh, uh, cashing out in U.S. currency. So we got a lot of things driving up the, the, the value of the dollar. Jesus Christ. A lot of things driving it up. So as a result... All right, when Janet Yellen said, look, doesn't matter how many interest rate hikes we have scheduled uh, on the dots, uh, it's, about, it's about this. We don't want it to go over 3% by 2019. So that basically states that the value of the dollar isn't going to be as valuable, but at the same time, it's not going to be devalued to any capacity as if uh, they're just going to go ahead and keep it at this half percent interest rate hike for an indefinite amount of time. So once again, it's a mixed bag. That's why you're seeing a helter-skelter response in the market. Let's go ahead and get to precious metals. We saw a decrease slightly today because of Janet Yellen's response and her comments that uh, no interest rate hike above 3% by 2019. So uh, the traders responded accordingly all right gold is down today nine dollars and twenty cents a percentage decrease of 0.76 percent decrease all the day closing out gold at one thousand two hundred and three dollars and seventy cents per troy ounce of gold so we're still above that twelve hundred dollar threshold on gold there folks so 
Not too bad. Saw a little bit of sell-off today, obviously, in response to Janet Yellen's comments. Let's go to silver. Silver is down today slightly 7 cents, a percentage decrease of 0.43% decrease on the day, closing out silver at $17.08 per troy ounce of silver. Copper is also down today, 0.38% decrease for copper. And platinum is up very, very modestly, once again, a 0.05% increase on the day for platinum. Let's go ahead and get to agriculture, shall we? The grains. We've got corn down modestly today after seeing increases for the past couple of days. Corn is down 0.14% decrease on the day. Wheat is down today, 0.58% decrease on the day for wheat. Oats is up and up and up. I'm telling you, man, I'm glad I'm not a big oat eater, but at the same time, I hear it's good for you. So, I mean, all you folks that are trying to eat healthy, I can tell you, you probably tell how much oats is going up at the supermarket. It is up again today, 3.11% increase on the day for oats. Rough rice is down today, 0.30% decrease on the day. Soybean is up 0.54% or increase, 0.54% increase on the day for soybean. Soybean oil up modestly, 0.06% increase. And canola is up 1.24% increase on the day. Let's get to the soft, shall we? Cocoa. The base for chocolate is down today, 0.09%. Coffee. Hey, dude, just don't talk to me. Don't talk to me unless I have my coffee, dude. I don't want you to talk to me unless I have my coffee. Shut up, you stupid, dumb, four-eyed fruit! Coffee finally coming down a little bit today. It is down 0.47%. We've got sugar up today, 1.21%. And orange juice, good God, man. Is nobody drinking orange juice anymore? I mean, this is the time to buy it if you happen to be consuming it and don't want to get sick and give yourself a little vitamin C every now and then. I mean, orange juice is down 2.22% decrease on the day. I mean, good God. Anyway, we got cotton up today, 0.21% increase on the day. Lumber taking it on the teeth today. It is down 2.36% decrease on the day. Good God. We've got rubber up today, 0.66%, and ethanol down 0.20% decrease for ethanol. Let's get to livestock now, once again, a little bit of helter-skelter in livestock, and uh, I, once again, I'm loving these goddamn uh, beef prices. I'm loving it. I'm telling you, I'm having steak every day, baby, steak every day. I'm talking good cuts, prime rib. I'm talking porterhouse, New York strips, you name it, baby, every day. Anyway, we've got livestock. Let's get to live cattle. It is up modestly today, 0.34% increase on the day for live cattle. Cattle feeder down today, 0.38% decrease for live ca- or for cattle feeder. And lean hogs finally starting to see a sell-off after riding high for several months, for heaven's sake. Let's go ahead and uh, continue going. It is down 1.29% decrease on the day for lean hogs. And before I move on, folks, let's talk about Bitcoin we're seeing some helter-skelter movement in Bitcoin, and you can thank China for this, folks. I'm telling you, they're, they are now starting to manipulate the damn currency of Bitcoin. We, they need to be stopped. They're being anointed right now in Davos, Switzerland, by the world's elite at the World Economic Forum. We must resist this dumb, imbecilic social model. All right? I mean, the elites are trying to anoint China as the social model of the world, for Christ's sake. Wake up! I mean, do you want to live under the Chinese social model? Honestly. Huh? I mean, do you really, really want to live under I mean, come on. I'm, I'm serious. I'm not joking around. I sure as hell don't. I'll tell you that right goddamn now. Anyway, we've got uh, Bitcoin right now. The price is $879.85. Per Bitcoin, folks, 
And that, my friends, is the markets for your ass, all right? And once again, for you folks that are just tuning in here, my apologies for the first 15 minutes. We've been having technical difficulties, unfortunately, all day with Blog Talk Radio. We were lucky to even uh, log in to be able to, you know, program our show today, for heaven's sake. So we're having technical difficulties all around, but uh, even though the 15 minutes, first 15 minutes was dead air, I want to thank you all for tuning in with me, all right? I mean, I almost thought that, you know, they were trying to silence me over here. You know, I almost thought that, you know, we had some maybe some, some CIA cyber hacksaws trying to stop me, or, or was it the Russians? Or was it the Russians? <laughs> I'm sick and tired of having these people claim that Russia is a bunch of freaking super hackers, for Christ's sake, man. And not to mention, I'm sick and tired of the damn left trying to claim that everybody who's on the right of the political spectrum is somehow a goddamn Russian agent, for Christ's sake. I don't like Ruskies. I don't like them, all right? I'm sorry, I don't like them. So that right there, you know, can you know, you could take your little Russian agent a uh, little hypothesis, your little theory, and shove it right up your goddamn progressive leftist fruit bowl ass. Sick and tired of this narrative, folks. Two days left. Two days left, man. It's just, it's just too long. This is just too long. I want Obama away. I want him in uh, history. I want this man to be nothing more than a black mark on American history, and I'm not joking. I'm tired of this guy, and I'm tired of everybody ingratiating this guy as if he did so much for America, for Christ's sake. Look at the Middle East, you dumb scumbags. Look at how many people he's murdered with his so-called Nobel Peace Prize chicken war hawk activity. Look at what he's done to the country. Look at what he's done to our economy, you stupid, ungrateful idiots. He's done nothing. He's destroyed this country. He's destroyed this country. And let me tell you, I, I'm done. I, I, you know, two days left of Obama. I'm done. I mean, this, you couldn't get any more slower of time, man. How much more slower can time go? I'm tired of it. I wouldn't be surprised if the DNC or, you know, these uh, disrupt SJ20 assholes, I would not be surprised if they were trying to sabotage my show, and that's why I couldn't log into the Blog Talk radio servers for the first 15 minutes of the broadcast. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt a bunch of little uh, social justice warrior SJ20, disrupt SJ20 fruit bowls, Gather around. Okay, this is what we got to do to disrupt true capitalist radio, okay, because he's a Nazi. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up our MS-DOS prompt, and we're going to put, like, ping local host, and we're going to put a, a this IP address, because this is the IP address for Blog Talk Radio, and we're all going to do it like committed communist leftists that conform to everything, and we're going to bring them down. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring them down. Yeah, shove it up your ass, all right? All right, shove it up your ass. What you dumb SJW or SJ20 disruptor idiots, what you don't understand is I am the underground assholes, all right? You guys go out here, you're being funded by Soros, you're being funded by all kinds of Big-time money groups that are just using you little people as pawns. But you see, I am the underground, you ungrateful, stupid, dumb leftist twats. I am the underground! I've been on this whole political platform since the whole damn thing was even conceived. I'm talking about the alt-right, all right? Take a look back in time. All my damn broadcasts are time-dated and stamped, boy. All the things that Donald Trump is talking about today, verbatim, I said it in 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012. Look it up for yourself. 
I mean, I was the alt-right before the alt-right just came along and decided to acknowledge itself. Do you understand me? That's all I'm saying. I am the underground! Anyway, folks, two, two days left. Two days left. That's all we have left of Obama, for Christ's sake. And I can't wait, boy. I can't wait. Anyway... Let me go ahead and let's go ahead and get to some Twitter shout outs right now for all the folks that are wanting to be shouted out on this broadcast. And for you folks that are unaware, all you've got to do is retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account. And the tweet to retweet is True Capitalist Radio Live. And when you tweet that tweet, I will give you a Twitter shout out live right here on the broadcast, right here and now. Uh, that's why we call this Twitter shoutouts, baby. I mean, this is the t- part of the broadcast where I allow the fans to be interactive. You can't get any more interactive than this show, baby. You couldn't get any more interactive. And even if you tried, do you think that somebody could orchestrate this as 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 good as this man right here? Why do you think that no one wants to come on this broadcast for an interview? Huh? They're afraid that they're going to be doxxed. They're afraid that someone's going to hack their cell phones and leak out their nudie pictures and all that crap. People are afraid of this broadcast. Why do you think we're always... Listen, talk to D. Ray McKesson right now if you haven't done so, and ask him about the capitalist army and see if your ass doesn't get ignored by that son of a bitch like that. Like that. Same with Talcum X, old Sean King. Huh? And they'll ignore your ass. I'm telling you, they don't, want, they don't want none of the capitalist army, boy. They don't want none of them. And I don't blame them, boy. I don't blame them. Anyway, do we got any Twitter shout-outs to be had here, Engineer? <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and get to some Twitter shout-outs right now. <laughs> All right, who do we got here? We got the Smiler in the house. What's going on? Uh, We've got uh, Modern Peasant. What's going on, Modern Peasant? Artron Havoc. We got Sahan Hajizad in the place. Uh, We got Christy Arnett in the place. Uh, What's going on, Christy Arnett? 24,000 followers. What's going on? What is she says? I write, I speak about life, love, chasing dreams, a podcaster. Hey, fellow podcaster in the house. What's going on? Who else do we have here? Uh, we've got uh, Sell Packers merch. Just shut up. Listen, I don't want to talk about the goddamn Dallas game. Shut up! I'm telling you, man, I don't want to watch. I'm not watching football anymore, right? It's over. The season's over for me. It's not even a reason to watch it, all right? We all know now that yeah, well, I don't want to talk about it. Let's get to, let's get to, let's get to more Twitter shout-outs. We've got Vivian HD. Uh, we've got Lightning Note in the house. We've got Green Leader. Uh, we got Ghost's Wife is a number nine law. You son of a bitch. Ghost's Wife is a number nine large. I've got your number nine large right here. I've got your number nine large right here. So suck it. Son of a bitch. Give me the freaking. I got your number nine right here. Son of a bitch. I'm telling you, you know, this is what I get for having Twitter shout outs. And, you know, I know I'm getting a lot of podcasters listening in. Don't do this, all right? Whatever you do, do not do this. This is what happens. You get people that make these little fruity ass names, they make fun of you, they besmirch your broadcast. They think it's cute. They think they're so goddamn funny. And they just love seeing you get upset and angry and making your goddamn life a living hell. That's the Internet, folks. Yeah, welcome to the Internet. A bunch of great folks that love to make other people's lives miserable. What a goddamn community. (sighs) Jesus Christ. We got distilling woodshed BTR. Yeah, no crap. I should take BTR to the woodshed. But I don't got the time right now. They they made me lose 15 minutes of my broadcast because of technical difficulties. We're having technical difficulties right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shut up. 
Get it straight. Paying you guys a hundred bucks a month to freaking broadcast out here. Get it straight. Anyway, we got the seven two seven caller here. We got Sergeant Yoda in the house. What's going on? Uh, fifteen minutes of DHS radio. What are we? Were y'all hearing something during that fifteen minutes? Uh, was that it? Were y'all? Were y'all was, was there something there? Was, was there some kind of a broadcast? Was there some kind of a Morse code symbol uh, uh, signal or, or or some kind of a goddamn weird noise or something trying to incept something in your brains or something? I'm serious. I don't know what the hell's going on. Anyway, let's continue going, folks. All right. Retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account. Of course, the tweet to retweet is True Capitalist Radio Live. And I'll give you a shout-out right here on the broadcast right here and now. Let's keep going, shall we? we got manhood magic in the house. We've got Apache for Trump. Apache for Trump. we got uh, Zyklon. Remember Apache the rapper? Remember that? I'm the black sheep. You're the black sheep. And then he sold that out to some, like, car commercial with a bunch of rodents. Yeah, that just goes to show you, you know, when when you think that you have street cred, yeah, it, 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 it takes a buck to sell you out like a bunch of, you know what, why am I even talking about this? Dorito Burrito, what's going on? We got Steinbrenner in the house. Two more days of hell, yeah, no kidding. We got uh, Shiny Pori. Who else do we have here? Putin Tickler, really, asshole? Putin Tickler. Jesus Christ, man. Who else do we have? We got Russian poop tickler. That's great. We got Latvian birthday. Is it Latvian capitalist's birthday? We got a lot of people in the inner circle having their birthdays today. I'm telling you, there's a big correlation. Like, all the inner circle guys, I mean, I'm serious. They all have, like, some correlation. It's weird, man. It's really weird. Anyway, great minds think alike. That's all I'm saying. Latvian capitalist, happy birthday, man. Happy birthday, and happy birthday to Capitalist Kush at, at the same time. What's going on? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday, dear Latvian capitalist and Capitalist Kush. birthday guys anyway let's continue going twitter shout out here uh retweet the first tweet if you want a twitter shout out live right here on the broadcast folks who else do we have here uh trolling for btr money what the hell are you talking about trolling for btr money son of a bitch we got armadillo bandit in the house what's going on who else do we have here we got uh, the brony network in the house We've got to uh, trim the bushes down. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're going to talk about that later on. I'm sorry, just, just, just calm down. We got the base lord in the place. What's going on? Congo Mueller. Uh, we've got Caleb the Capitalist in the place. Once again, if you want a Twitter shout out, all you got to do is give a retweet on my Twitter account. You know, True Capitalist Radio Live is the tweet to retweet. It's that damn simple to make it a little interactive around here. Anyway, let's continue going, for Christ's sake. We got, what, Capitalist Valentine. Capitalist Valentine. That's right, Valentine's Day, isn't it? Oh, my God, Valentine's. At that time of the freaking year where everybody's got to pretend that uh, they've got a girlfriend, right? Or a boyfriend, either one, you know what I'm saying? That time of the year when you got the fat chicks, you know, uh, basically buying flowers to be delivered to themselves at work so they could pretend to their colleagues, no, I really have a boyfriend. He loves me. He's my valentine. He's such a sweetheart. You know what? 
Maybe I should start selling, you know, true capitalist radio valentines for all the lonely chaps that are out there. How's that? How's that? Maybe I'll do something of that nature, because Valentine's is coming around. we got a lot of hard legs. we got a lot of lonely ladies out here that aren't going to, or pansexuals, transsexuals, I mean, whoever. They, they're lonely. They're not going to be having anything for Valentine's. Maybe I'll, maybe, I'll sell, maybe I'll sell a Valentine, maybe a nice cheap Valentine guard. Uh, uh, how about that? How about all of that? And, 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 and like, uh, it's because I love you guys, all right? Because isn't St. Valentine, isn't that supposed to be, you know, the, the little Cupid, you know, what was it? I don't know the history of Valentine's Day. I don't really care. But isn't that supposed to mean that you're supposed to love everybody? I love you! So I'll go ahead and, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and, yeah, I think I'll do something like that. I'll figure out something. I'll get something together. So all the lonely chaps that are listening, they'll get themselves a ghost valentine. I'll make sure to put something nice and, and brotherly love-worthy, if you will. You know, something that uh, uh, that heightens the spirit. You know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll write a poem. Maybe I'll write a, maybe I'll write a love poem or something. Maybe I'll write a love life poem or some kind of crap like that. I don't know. I'm just thinking of it right now. Anyway, let's continue going, shall we? All right, now, uh, if you want a Twitter shout-out, retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account, all right? All right, and once again, I can see these sick-ass twisted names already, for Christ's sake. Like, there's Billy the Belt Boy. Jesus Christ, who else do we have here? There's Blood Fart. What's going on a Blood Fart? Uh, who else do we have here? Once again, uh, the tweet to retweet is True Capitalist Radio Live, all right, Milky Liquors? Jesus Christ, with these sick names, for Christ's sake. Scarlet Moon in the house. Mark Montag in the place. Sell Dragon Balls merch? No, I'm not going to sell any of that crap. Sell, here, sell Tohu merch. Sell Overwatch merch. No, no, no. We've got Remington in the house. Sell Tanky merch. No. Pornhub.com. Is that for real? Are they really retweeting? Oh, that's a clone. Get that. Get out of here. I thought freaking Pornhub.com was retweeting, for Christ's sake. What the hell do they want? But it's a freaking clone. Ghost Gay Valentine. How long did that take? Jesus Christ, you sick trolls, man. What else do we have here, for Christ's sake? The Inner Synagogue. The inner who the hell who the hell did that, you son of a <laughs> Shut it up your ass! <laughs> you son of a bitch, the inner synagogue! The inner synagogue, you son of a bitch! I tell you that right damn now. The inner synagogue. Give me the mic. <laughs> Give me the mic. Jesus Christ. Oy vey, they know. Shut it down. Anyway, who else do we have here for Christ's sake? I'm telling you, you guys are making me sick with some of these goddamn names. Who else do we have here for Christ's sake? We got uh, Ghost Kruger, Exara Hawks in the place. What's going on to Baxter Chan? Who else do we have here? I'm not saying that disgusting name. Double Dip. TCR is shut up. Uh, Quato Drown Tacos. What the hell does that mean? What the hell does that mean? Ghost dot market condoms. I'm not what I'm not gonna sell a condom with my name on it. There's something very strange about that. You know? I mean, that's all I get. I mean, uh, don't you think that would be strange? Here you are, you're about to score, and with whatever sexual partner you are, you're putting on this condom on your package, and you roll it out, and it says ghost on there. I mean, what, what is that? That's that going to increase the sexual stimulation, for heaven's sake? Give me a break. Anyway, we got Kingfish in the house. What's going on, man? CDI fan 237. Sell Lego merch. Oh, that's great. That's just great. Who else do we have here? We got, uh, I'm not going to say that disgusted name. Cowboys lost LOL. Shut up. They were robbed. They were robbed by the referees, and anybody who saw that game knows it. 
Anyway, folks, we are now in the second hour of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Before we get started on anything else, I'd like for everybody to please spread it around like wildfire and let everybody know that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, and we are live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on the official website of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, and it is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And, of course, if you have not done so, please follow me on Twitter. The Twitter name to follow is Politics Ghost. All one word, no underscores. Politics Ghost is the name to follow, folks, all right? Now, let's continue going with these Twitter shout-outs. I feel like I owe a little bit to the fans out here because of the technical difficulties that we had for the first 15 minutes for this broadcast. So let's continue going. Sell Packers merch. Shut up. Uh, Arma Chu. Arma Chu. Uh, shut up! I know what you did there, ass crack. Plays Minecraft. Are you kidding? No, I, I don't even play video games, jerk off. What are you talking about? Uh, we've got, uh, BTR9 Ghost Zero. Yeah, real funny, for Christ's sake. McCain for Prez? Who the hell would say that? That asshole should be in prison. You understand that? John McCain should be in prison! And you can tell him I said that! Hold on. Do you hear that chopper? What the hell is the chopper doing circling my place, man? I'm telling you, I don't like this crap. Got fucking choppers. I'm excuse my French folks, but I got freaking choppers going on around here. Leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Anyway, folks, my apologies. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting a little paranoid here, but uh, I hear choppers. I don't know if y'all hear it, but I hear it. We got metal capitalist suspect confirmation. What the hell does that mean? We got King Edward Undead, cheese heads for ghosts. Yeah, shut up, all right? Go shove your cheese up your cheese hole. We got Havel the Rock in the place. Sell fairy tie merch. What the hell does that mean? No! No! Anyway, we've got uh, you, Rock, cancel that. What the hell does that mean? What, what are you guys talking about? Are y'all trying to make me say something so you could splice me? You know what? Shut up. Ghost is a dictator. Oh, yeah, am I, am I a dictator, for Christ's sake? Well, you know what? Suck it, all right? Take uh, Here, take a number nine large right up your damn pooper. Oh, you know what? You want that, don't you? Jesus Christ. You know, you can't even insult people anymore because then they're like, oh, yeah, ah. Uh. I mean, seriously, man, this homosexual thing is getting so out of hand that literally, I mean, you could be you could be like in line at some of these like fruity ass cities like Austin, Texas, and let me tell you, San Hambonio is pretty fruity itself. The bad part about it is it's a bunch of fat fems walking around out here. Oh my God, a bunch of disgusting fat fems. And of course, you know me, I don't believe in fat fems. I think that's a freaking put on. It's an act. You understand? It's an act. But I'm telling you, you could be in line at a goddamn grocery store, you know what I mean? And, you know, you got to you gotta let one out, you know, and you could be just like, <laughs> you know, you let one out, and then all of a sudden you got gay guys looking around, hollering, virgin, virgin, where's the virgin guy? Where is he? I heard it. I mean, that's how fruity we're getting. Out. I'm not even joking. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. That's how fruity we're getting out here. Anyway, folks, my apologies here. Uh, look, I'm going to take a couple more Twitter shout-outs. I'm sorry. I, listen, I don't believe 
I, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Let me move on, for Christ's sake. I've got people asking me, what are you talking about, ghosts? Anyway, let's move on. We got Ghost Market X Escorts. Oh, yeah, Ghost.Market Escorts. That'll, that'll pan over nicely. We got That's Mimi. What's going on? We've got uh, Cell Number 9 merch. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, maybe I should. Yeah, maybe I should, maybe I should put a number nine large or something, and then yeah, that's that sounds great. Hold on, y'all hear the y'all hear it? Y'all hear it? Y'all hear the chopper? Y'all hear that chopper? Calling the beautifully redesigned 2017 Mercedes-Benz CLA simply a four-door coupe is like describing a world-class athlete as just a good runner. With its sleek profile and powerful turbocharged engine, the CLA offers agility and design that are unmatched in its class. And it's available now at an exceptional price. Why drive any four-door coupe when you could be driving the 2017 Mercedes-Benz CLA? Visit MBUSA.com CLA to learn more. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. Y'all hear it? There's a freaking chopper over my house. Listen. It's freaking hovering over my house. Leave me alone. I got a freaking chopper over my house. I don't know what the hell's going on here, folks, but I don't like choppers just floating around my house. I can tell you that right damn now. There's a freaking chopper out here. People in the inner circle chat are telling me to go outside. I go outside. Templeton flies out the, out the freaking door. Are you kidding me? And that's all I need is to lose Templeton because he wants to go out and be a like happy little lark and explore the damn world. And before you know it, he could become street pizza. So, no, I'm not opening the door. Anyway, let's move on here. Um, we got Do It Again BTR. Yeah, shut up, all right? We got Admiral Poop Tickler. Who else do we have here, for Christ's sake? I'm only going to take a couple more of these Twitter shout-outs, and I'm moving on because I can already see where this is headed. All right, Ghost to the Choppa. Ghost to the Choppa! That's not funny! <laughs> shut up! I got a fucking helicopter flying around my head! I've got a helicopter floating around my house. I've got a helicopter floating around my house. And you people think it's a big goddamn joke. You people think it's so cute, don't you? Look, there, there it is again. I mean, are you... What the hell is this goddamn freaking... Chopper's problem, man. Jesus Christ, leave me alone. You know what? I'm, that's it. I'm not going to do any more Twitter shout-outs. I can already tell you guys are going to make fun of me on this chopper thing. I'm, I'm very upset about what the hell's going on here. There's a chopper over my house. And it's just flying around. For, I don't know why. It's just flying around. All right, let me calm down. Let me calm down. I'm sorry, folks. My apologies here. I mean, listen, do y'all hear this? Listen to this crap. There's a freaking chopper over here. I mean, get the hell out. Get away. Look, I don't like what's going on here, folks. I mean, look, first of all, I couldn't connect to my damn BTR broadcast for 15 minutes. All right? I'm, I, I, I can't do I don't know what the hell's going on here. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, I, I don't know what the hell's going on. Ugh. All right, folks, let me calm down. I, I'm just, I'm listening to choppers here, and I don't know, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry if I sound a little like, you know, pre, 
disposed here or I'm preoccupied. I'm listening to choppers right now. I'm not even joking around. I mean, listen to this crap. I mean, I'm not joking around, man. I may, I may end the broadcast early. I don't like this crap. I didn't like that I couldn't freaking uh, connect to my broadcast right away. And now I've got choppers swarming my house right now. <sighs> anyway, listen, I'm going to. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and uh, continue broadcasting, and uh, I hear it. I mean, there's a freaking chopper over my house, folks. I'm not even messing around. It's been it's been just hovering around here. It has no business being out here. I'm just saying. <sighs> anyway, where was I, engineer? I don't even know where the hell I'm at. Right there. All right. I was talking about two days of Obama, and uh, you know I was talking about I'm done with this guy. I, I'm having I'm, that's about enough. And uh, man, folks, I'm sorry. This chopper is really just kind of preoccupying my time here. I don't like a chopper just kind of hanging around. Anyway, folks, uh, let me go ahead and get to the rest of the broadcast. We're already running late, man. We had, you know, technical difficulties for the first 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and get to the rest of the broadcast. Let's get to Donald Trump's inauguration since we're two days away from it, baby. Donald Trump is going to be sworn in with two different Bibles. One of them that was uh, used to swear in Abraham Lincoln, and the other was a Bible that was given to him by his mother. And, of course, he, uh, you know, really misses his mother, appreciates his mother, appreciates his parents in general. So I thought that was a very, very uh, good, heartfelt sentiment going into the inauguration. Now, what I don't really appreciate is you've got all these skewed, uh, trumped up, for a lack of a better term, polls out here trying to claim that Trump's approval rating is slipping. And let me tell you something, that it, it could be completely, uh, that, uh, that could be, the most dumbest false statement I've ever heard in my life. Here's that chopper again. What the hell? Listen! You hear that shit? You hear the freaking chopper? You hear that? Good God, man! It's just hovering around out here! And it, uh, what the hell? It's just hovering around my house. It's just hovering around my house. And it's like making like swoops so it can like, you know, vibrate the house a little bit for Christ's sake. Son of a bitch. Oh, my God. Look, I'm sorry, folks, if I'm sounding, you know, kind of <laughs> discombobulated and I'm multitasking, worrying about something else. I got freaking chopper floating around my house. I've been floating around my house ever since I started the broadcast. I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know what's going on here, man. I don't like it one bit. I don't like it one goddamn bit. Jesus Christ, man. And who the hell tweeted this? That's horrible. Somebody tweeted me in a freaking helicopter crash. You son of a... <laughs> Shut up your ass! Look at the Twitter, folks. They just tweeted me as if I was just in a helicopter crash. That's not funny! That's not funny! I got choppers over my house, and you're freaking... think it's a joke! You think it's a joke! Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. You son of a bitch. Oh, my God. I've got freaking choppers over my house. Folks, look, I'm sorry. I, I should be talking about Donald Trump, him being inaugurated, you know, how the country's going to change, how this is a capitalist revolution, and how the capitalists have taken control of state power. But I've got a chopper over my house. 
I've got a chopper over my house. Do you, I mean, do you all hear this crap? I'm not joking around. This guy, whoever the hell's flying the chopper is pissing me off. I'm not kidding around. If this son of a bitch keeps coming, I'm gonna, I might, I might take a shot at it. I'm not even joking around. I'm not kidding. I mean, could I, could I get in trouble for that if I, if I decided to take a shot at the damn chopper? Could I get in trouble for that if it happens to go down and crash? Could I, could I get in trouble for that? I mean, I don't know what the hell that is up there. It could be anybody. It could be Russians. I mean, if you believe the media, that could be a Russian helicopter up there. The media has got me so scared of Russians now. Uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that excuse if I do it. I'm going to say that it's Russians, and I was scared that it was a you know Red Dawn, and I thought it was a Russian aircraft, so I shot it down because the Democrats said that it's the Russians. I'm serious, man. I'm hearing this chopper. I don't like it one bit, man. Anyway, once again, Donald Trump to be sworn in with two different Bibles, one that was used to swear in Abraham Lincoln, the other a Bible that was given to him by his mother. Uh, a good news as far as the new Trump administration is concerned, Trump promises not to move the White House press briefing room, but he is going to choose who is let in to the White House briefing room. And he has already said that he's open to bloggers, talk show hosts, and independent media, baby. So I've tweeted at Donald Trump already and said, hey, Donald Trump, Please put TCR down so we can send a correspondent into your briefing and we can have that correspondent relay your message properly. All right? I mean, could you imagine, baby? Yes! <laughs> yes! Uh, I'm telling you, I can't wait for them to kick out all those stupid, dumb, left-wing, long-haired, bedwetting propaganda mouthpieces for the Democratic Party and put in some true alternative media, some facts, truthful-based alternative media, baby. I can't wait. Can't wait, man. I'm telling you, tweet at Donald Trump, man. We need a true capitalist radio correspondent in that briefing room, man. We need a true capitalist radio correspondent in there, and we will make you a part of the show. I'm not even joking around. Somebody just go in there and just you know, take what uh, 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 Sean Spicer, who is the press secretary, take what he says, and we'll get to you. And you can be like, yes, uh, I am so-and-so, the true capitalist radio correspondent here at the White House. And Sean Spicer said today that he's going to uh, – or uh, Donald Trump is going to slash 25 percent uh, federal employees. He did say 20, but he got tired of these – ridiculous dumbass fruit bowl so he decided 25 percent put them in the unemployment line because well it's a capitalist revolution i'm serious man i can't wait I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it all right i mean just imagine drudge represented i mean breitbart you know Infowars, the, the, the the underground of the internet the real news of the internet the truth the truth That's what I'm talking about, baby. I can't wait. How about you? How about you? I can't wait. I can't wait. Once again, Trump, is, uh, Trump promises not to move the White House briefing room, but will choose who is let in. I can't wait, man. I, I just can't wait. Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to switch to another subject matter that I was talking about yesterday. We may spend a bulk of the time talking about it here this hour. Because, uh, once again, James O'Keefe does it again, exposing a leftist terrorist plot uh, for the Trump inauguration. And not only did he uh, bust a terrorist plot, but he has basically exposed every one of the dirty tactics that these affiliates of Disrupt J20, which is this a uh, group of groups, so to speak, colluding with one another to cause havoc, or in their words, cause a sh uh, what do they what do they call it? Uh, a cluster F. That's what they want. They want a cluster F. Cluster F has been used 
in the videos being released by Project Veritas. If you have not seen those videos, I strongly advise you to look at those videos that expose leftist terrorist planning. And not only was this video exposing leftists talking about putting acid in the ventilation systems of certain inaugural events at the Trump inauguration, uh, talking about, uh, you know, setting off sprinkler systems, keeping people in buildings, you know, all kinds of terrorist acts, all right? They were planning this terrorism at Comet Pizza, at Comet Ping Pong Pizza, the pizza place at the center of Pizzagate. What are the odds, man? What are the goddamn odds? What are the odds that this leftist terrorism that's being planned for Trump's inauguration is being planned at Comet Pizza? Not to mention, what are the odds that one of the folks that were caught in on video talking about committing domestic leftist terrorism and playing it at Com- uh, Comet Pizza, how come it's, what are the odds of one of these guys being a pedophile? Huh? One of the guys that was on tape in the Part 1 Project Veritas video in which they have these two which look like AIDS-infected gentlemen, folks, and once again, I don't know what's going on with these HIV AIDS related people and their I mean complete disregard for humanity. But that's another subject matter, but once again these two gentlemen talking about putting acid in the ventilation systems at certain uh inauguration events at Trump's inauguration, talking about committing domestic leftist terrorism, the guy with the longer hair to your viewer right with the longer hair, the guy that was sitting next to the more, uh, uh, you know, the more strong, silent type, which was also, you know, look AIDS infected. Uh, the longer hair guy actually is pro pedophile. This is a man they have found on the internet, variety of different sources where he writes in favor of adult child sex. So what are the odds again? Okay, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Everybody was calling Pizzagate fake news, okay? What are the odds that Project Veritas catches people planning leftist domestic terrorism at Trump's inauguration at Comet Ping Pong Pizza, the pizza place at the center of Pizzagate, and the one of the guys in the video at Comet Pizza that was planning the leftist terrorism is a damn self-professed pedophile. What are the odds, man? Can somebody please answer me that? What are the odds? Because, I, I mean, seriously, man. And on top of all this, on top of all this, we also have, folks, John Podesta leading these disrupt SJ20 groups. Oh, oh. And for you folks that are unaware, I tweeted a, a photo or retweeted a photo of John Podesta with these group of disruptors that are planning this domestic terrorist acts. All right? And I'm not joking. So once again, folks, what are the odds all these characters involved in all this nefarious activity? Yeah. What are the odds? What are the odds? I'm just saying. And moreover, folks, I'd like for everybody to look at a CBS reality check, which covers Pizzagate right now. Let me go ahead and retweet a WikiLeaks tweet that was tweeted some time ago, about 18 hours ago, in which we finally have somebody, even though it's an affiliate network, somebody finally putting a spotlight and canonizing the legitimate journalism of inquiring about what the hell Pizzagate is. All right? I'm not joking around. I I mean, I'm not joking. So that's why I'm saying, folks, okay? That's why I'm saying all this stuff that we are witnessing out here, all the Pizzagate stuff we were discussing, everything is all coming full circle now, isn't it? It's all coming full circle now. 
I mean, this fake news that was Pizzagate, they can't keep it in the bottle. So what are they doing at this point in time now, folks? Well, we talked about it for the past couple of weeks. Fox introduces a show that shows a six-year-old with a ball gag and an eight-year-old transgendered boy who wants to be a girl who's in a dress stating, and I quote, uh, I can feel the wind hit my, my vagina in this dress. That's an eight-year-old transgendered boy saying that on primetime television. So what they're trying to do, folks, is they're trying to desensitize and potentially uh, make it legal, these types of encounters, so that even if there is some level of exposure of what Pizzagate is alluded to, pedophilia, if not worse, they'll sit here and have plausible deniability suggesting that, well, everybody was doing it. It was desensitized. You know, I mean, I'm not joking. This is where we're headed, folks. And I tweeted, or actually retweeted a tweet from 2012 by Donald Trump where he talks about perverts that are, uh, you know, snacking, snatching up these kids. Uh, there needs to be something done about it. Fast trial, death penalty, that's all there is to it. And this was an ominous tweet from 2012, folks, because I'm telling you this right now. If you really research Pizzagate, it will completely blow your mind. That's why most people don't even want to believe it's true. That's why they want to go along with the fake news narrative as it pertains to Pizzagate. That's what they want. Here, let me go ahead and retweet that Donald Trump tweet again here. Here it is. It says, got to do something about these missing children grabbed by these perverts. Uh, too many incidents. Fast trial, death penalty. You're goddamn right. And that's what we, as those of us that have at least a certain level of moral principle. And listen, you don't even have to be religious to be moral, to know that anything sexual, heterosexual, homosexual, transsexual, pansexual, anything sexual should not be subjected to a kid. I mean, I should go without saying, but folks, they're trying to desensitize us to do this crap, huh? That's why I'm saying, folks, anybody who molests a child, death penalty, kill them, kill them fast, kill them harsh, and kill them with much pain. That's all I'm saying, folks. No mercy for anybody justifying pedophilia. No mercy for anybody who's justifying sexualizing a kid. No mercy for this. We can't have any kind of mercy. Death to all of them, man. And I'm telling you this right now. We have to put this in the inception of the majority of the American public. So when individuals start doing their moral duty and start, with all due respect, I'm not advocating this, but I'm suggesting that it could happen because of how they're desensitizing child molestation and pedophilia a lot of these people are going to snap, and they're going to start taking justice into their own hands, Charles Bronson style, okay? And when people start implementing Charles Bronson style justice on these pedophiles that are bragging about it, that think it's a joke, that are writing in justification of it, or actually one themselves that has not been busted, I want everybody who's in the jury of the, this particular patriot, of this person who has moral principle, to find the man not guilty. Do you understand me? We need a jury. We need many a juries to find people who are charged with killing, in, in my opinion, or I should, let, me, let, me, let me rephrase that, excuse me, who are charged with dispensing justice with extreme prejudice on pedophiles, we have to give them a non-guilty verdict, all right? It's up to us, the American people, to do this. You know, y'all ever heard of that movie Nightmare on Elm Street? That's what that movie was all about. Freddy Krueger was a child molester and a child killer, okay? 
The story goes that all the parents of the kids knew that Freddy Krueger was killing these kids and doing all kinds of nefarious things to these kids. And he, no one could touch him. No one could touch Freddy Krueger in the story. So the parents took it upon themselves to corner this guy and to burn him alive in an incinerator. Because why? Because the parents of Elm Street, all right, decided that they weren't going to accept the lack of justice being implemented on a child killer, on a child molester, and as a result, they took justice into their own hands, and rightfully so. Now, of course, the movie goes on to say that Freddy came back and he's haunting their children in their dreams and all this other crap, but I'm just, I'm talking about the moral, I'm talking about the crux of the story, the actual reason why Freddy Krueger's even relevant, because the parents killed him. All right? The parents killed him. So that's why I'm saying, folks, we're going to have to come to a point where we're going to have to dispense justice with extreme prejudice as it pertains to these pedophiles. And I, I dare somebody to come up to me and question me on my thoughts, on my views on pedophile death penalty vigilante style. All right, I, I, I challenge, because let me tell you something right now, all right? I, I'm not going to sit here, and I'm not going to accept this crap, and neither should anybody. And listen, it's not based on any religious morality, okay? Because there's religions that actually condone this crap, okay? We've got Muslims that condone this garbage. We've got a Catholic church that's practicing this crap in secret! So this has nothing to do with religion. This is a morality based on humanity, based on the same enlightenment, the, the same principles of our forefathers. I mean, this is a moral principle based on humanity, that we are not, not going to subject ourselves to allow a, ourselves or anybody to sexualize a child. And we have to force people that for whatever reason that have this disgusting, despicable pedophile urge, we have to force them either to suppress that or eliminate them from society altogether. And as I stated, folks, we're going to need some jury trials for people. And we're going to have to find these people not guilty. You understand that? Not guilty because a lot of these pedophiles – and these people that are uh, pro-child porn and all this other crap, these people need to die, in my opinion. Anyway, folks, uh, I know I'm going a little too serious. People are probably like, oh, my God, he's getting too serious here. So uh, to lighten the mood up, uh, let me go ahead and call a number here really fast that, um, that I just got that is supposed to be the uh, owner of Comet Pizza's cell phone number. And let's see if we can get him on the horn, and let's see if we can have him maybe talk about some things. Maybe not necessarily Pizzagate related, but uh, let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we can get him on the horn, all right? Put him on, engineer. The person you are trying to reach is not accepting calls at this time. Please try your no, call again later. Not. La persona con la que intenta comunicarse no, no acepta llamadas en este momento. All right. Favor de llamar de nuevo más tarde. All right, burrito. Message 24. US zero right. one L V. Shut it off! Jesus Christ, man! Here, let's call him one more again. All right, let's call him one more again. The person you are trying to reach is not yeah, accepting guy, calls. He ain't, at time. he ain't accepting calls. Are you kidding me? He ain't accepting calls. Anyway, that was James Elefantes's number. So, anyway. <sighs> Now, I know I was talking a lot about this um, SJ20. I went off on a whole bunch of tirades, okay, talking about pizza gay, talking about a bunch of stuff. The bottom line is, folks, is that um, aside from the pedophiles, uh, the leftism is starting to correlate itself with this pedophilia. And the proof is in the Project Veritas videos themselves, man. 
they find they have two individuals talking about domestic terrorism at Comet Pizza. One of the individuals with the longer hair on the camera actually condones adult child sex and has written about it and is a pro-pedophile. What are the odds? That's what I wanted to ask James Elefantes. What are the odds that, oh, you've got two leftist radicals out here trying to plan domestic terrorism, and one of them happens to be a pedophile, which you and your goddamn little pizza place is accused of actually doing? So that's why I'm saying, folks, I mean, this is serious, and the more and more you learn about Pizzagate, the more and more you learn about how it correlates with the Podesta emails, the more and more that you start realizing that this Marina Amabravic, who was this uh, – and let me tell you who Marina Amabravic is, folks. It's not a coincidence that what we see as a lunatic and as a real strange woman – who you know uh, you know puts blood up and you know cuts herself and you know pentagrams cut into her stomach and all this weird stuff that she does. Okay, this woman, believe it or not, is a high priestess in the Satanic Church. And when I mean the Satanic Church, I'm not talking about the you know fictitious established one that was established by you know the the ex carney Anton Lavey. I'm talking about the deep secret Satanic order that literally runs our society, runs the elites, runs Hollywood, runs anything that is influential to us. Marina Amabravic is serious business. And believe it or not, it's not a coincidence why every star is pictured with this woman. And those of us that are just on the sidelines looking in, we don't even know who the hell this woman is. This woman just came out of nowhere. I mean, had not Julian Assange tweeted that spirit cooking YouTube video, we would have never have ever known who this woman was. So that's why I am ast- I'm telling you this right now. Marina Amabravic is serious business. She is not an artist. She's not a performance artist. She is a high priestess Satanist. She is practicing Aleister Crowley sigil magic. And whether you believe it or don't believe it, these elites believe it, man. That's what I keep telling you folks that are atheists or you believe in this or you believe in that. It doesn't matter what you believe. They believe it. And if they believe it, then they can manifest whatever the hell they're trying to conjure up for heaven's sake. I mean, and doesn't it make sense that these elites can run amok, cause wars, have people die, cause famine, uh, infl- I mean, make up and create and inflict people with diseases, I mean, a whole nine yards, and nothing happens to these people? Nothing happens to these people. That's because whatever the hell they believe, they're actually believing, and whatever they feel is protecting them. So that's why I'm saying everybody needs to look into the satanic aspect of everything. Look into the satanic aspect of Hollywood. I mean, it's no coincidence. Everybody talks about all the symbols and all the esoteric uh, uh, symbolism and magic being thrown at you in uh, music videos and and, uh, movies and that sort of thing. Why? Why are they doing that? Because there's something within your subconscious that you don't know about. Now, we don't really know. But but the people who are actually believing in this crap know. And I want to tell you this right now. Just because these people are throwing all these hand symbols and all these different signals, esoteric you know, s- symbolism, It doesn't mean that those tools of symbolism are exclusive to them. Go back in time a little bit and talk a little bit about Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler was more than just some guy that was getting up on a podium, flapping his hair in the wind, saying, No slogan, schlegen, schlagen, Volkswagen! He was doing a lot more than that, folks, okay? He was practicing magic on everybody. If you take a look at this man's hand signs, he's throwing symbolism at everybody that he speaks at. Take a look at all his rallies. I mean, take a look at how he uses fire, symbolism, ritualism, so on and so forth. Take a look at the Nazi symbol itself. 
Do you even know what the swastika really even means? It doesn't mean Nazi. It's the symbol of the sun. All right, that's what the swastika is. It's the symbol of the sun. Calling the 2017 Mercedes-Benz GLA simply a compact SUV is like describing a cathedral as just four walls and a ceiling. The GLA is both a beautiful work of design and one of the most functional SUVs in its class, and it's available at an exceptional price. Why drive any compact SUV when you could be driving the 2017 Mercedes-Benz GLA? Visit MBUSA.com slash GLA to learn more. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. So, with that being said, whether you believe it or not, Hitler believed it, his inner circle believed it, and as a result, because they all believed in this, they manifested the German Reich, okay? I mean, I know that people want to think otherwise, but this man, if it had not been for his occult knowledge, he would have never have been who he was. And I'm talking about Hitler. He would have never have been who he was. All right? Never! I mean, he uses the swastika for the freaking symbol of the Nazis. It's the symbol of the sun, man. So anyway, listen. I'm not trying to get into a history lesson about esoteric knowledge, but whether you believe in it or not, these people do. So you, you know, if you want to think that you're higher than everybody else and you're more intelligent because you're an atheist and you think all this stuff is silly... Well, then that's why you're going to die a death and rest in peace. God, well, he was an atheist, so something rest his soul. Christopher Hitchens, that's how you're going to die. You're going to die like Christopher Hitchens. Because Christopher Hitchens was a devout atheist, soulless, you know, very, very cerebral, you know, scientific. You know, and I'm not talking about scientific in the sense of Descartes, uh, Galileo, and Newton, I'm talking science in the sense of, uh, you know, atheist proving everything spiritual wrong, spirituality is wrong, we're bacteria on a rock, so on and so forth. Look at how this man died. He died through a cancer manifestation that killed him within like months, all right? I mean, he killed him within months. Now, you have people that live a lot longer lives, abusing their bodies a lot harder and a lot worse, that are able to live to 75, 80 years old. Why? Because they actually have, at least in their own simple, feeble mind, some level of belief, whether in themselves or in a higher power or in a higher purpose. All right? And listen, whether you want to believe me or not, take a look at all the atheists out here. I mean, have you heard an old atheist? And if you do hear of an old atheist, it's only because they have become atheists, and they may just be saying they're atheists, but in actuality practicing Satanism or something, some other witchcraft or something of that capacity. All right? That's what atheists like to do. They like to claim that they're uh, non-God worshiping, and in the meantime, they're in the closet, you know, uh, practicing Santeria or some kind of crap like that. I'm not joking. So all I'm saying is, is that people need to realize that whether you all believe in this or not, they believe in it, okay? They believe in it. I mean, why exactly is Maria Amabravic so prevalent? I mean, she's the modern-day Aleister Crowley, folks. Why was Aleister Crowley so prevalent? What made this guy? So, I, mean, I mean, this guy was a freak show. What made this guy so important? I'm telling you, folks, these people know something. And the people that are in the charge of our country, in charge of our world, they know as well. So all I'm saying is you folks need to realize that there's something more going on than just politics as it pertains to power, as it pertains to obtaining power, as it pertains to revolution, as it pertains to uh, having God on your side. Because, folks, look in the back of the dollar bill. There's esoteric knowledge all over the dollar bill. 
Look at what's on top of the pyramid, over the capstone of the all C and I. It says, God has crowned our enterprise with success. Anuit coeptus. God has crowned our enterprise with success. What God are they talking about? What God are they talking about? Anyway, folks, let me go ahead and, and just move on from this, because I'm, I'm just getting too off keister. I'm going off subject matters, and I'm sorry. Once again, let's, I mean, we, we're going back to the Disrupt J20, folks. You see, the majority of those people, have you seen the second video by Project Veritas that was put out yesterday? Ha, have you taken a look at the leaders of these groups that are organizing these violent terrorist acts? They're, they're all, and listen, I have nothing against homosexuals, transsexuals, uh, lesbians. Well, I, I personally don't really like lesbians, but that's my personal issue. I, I mean, I'll obviously do business with a lesbian. I'll talk to a lesbian, obviously, but I, I just don't believe it. Okay, that's my personal issue. But I still wouldn't hate on them, all right? I still don't think that they're bad people. But, folks, it seems to me that the majority of these leaders of these groups, and you can look on Project Veritas, uh, James O'Keefe's Part 2 video, they're all a bunch of AIDS-infected-looking fruits. They all look emaciated, all right? A, uh, a swollen eyes, sunken cheeks, you know, very, very, you know, feminine, you know, kind of skin-hanging-off bone type of anemic, you know, very pale-faced. I'm serious, folks. I'm not joking around. I mean, why is it that we're seeing a correlation between the most vile, disgusting organizers of political violence on the left and these people being either afflicted with the HIV-AIDS virus or homosexual? And to be honest with you, I don't exclusively say it's homosexual. I believe that every one of those folks that are leading the charge in those videos on Project Veritas are infected with the AIDS, in my opinion. You can just see it all over them. And you see, folks, we need to have a conversation about this. I mean, I think that AIDS folks are even more dangerous than just them spreading that AIDS around. I think that they're dangerous in the head. I think that there's more than a plethora of, a, of abundant amount of observational evidence that shows that for whatever reason, whenever these folks get the AIDS, they want to hurt people, you know? They want to make sure that pain is inflicted on other people. And I don't really get it. I don't get it. And let me tell you something. We've got to stop it. And that's why I call out the LGBT movement and these pride parades. You know, oh, I'm, I got pride. I'm, I got pride and pride parades. Are you kidding me? What's so prideful? about knowing and let me tell you i know for a fact that you goddamn gays do this all the time you allow young up-and-coming what you call fish in your community which are 18 year old 19 year old 21 year old gay males all right you like to purposely prey on these young men not just for sexual gratification, but to infect them with the diseases that you are afflicted with. And everyone in your scene, everyone in the LGBT scene knows you're infected, knows that you're infecting a fish and aren't saying a goddamn thing about it. There is no pride in that. Do you understand me, LGBT? There is no pride in that. You all are infecting yourselves with a death disease, and then when you're getting it, you are basically kissing humanity and any sense of humanity goodbye. Because D. Ray McKesson, Scott Fovel, these two fruits that were caught on video at Comet Pizza, the other leaders of these groups that were caught on the Project Veritas video part two, I mean, do you understand? There is a correlation between people that are leading groups of leftist lunatics and them being afflicted with the AIDS, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, we need to have a conversation about this, man. I mean, what is it about the AIDS, all right? What is it about the AIDS that makes these people such lunatics? 
and want to inflict hurt on other people. I mean, I'm not just talking about hurt, like, hey, I'm just going to make this guy's life miserable, like troll or something. No, they want to hurt somebody for life. You know, they want to physically hurt somebody. They want to kill somebody. I think it's really dangerous, folks. And, and look, I, I, I feel bad for folks with AIDS and the HIV, but, man, I think that we need to treat them a little differently now, not just because they're afflicted with the AIDS and they're, you know, infecting everybody and their brother, but what is going on with these AIDS victims mentally? There's something going on here, and it needs to be said, and it needs to be highlighted, and we need to do something about it. I mean, I, I'm going to be honest with you, folks. I mean, I now, because of all the AIDS victims that are out here exposed on these videos related to leftist terrorism, leftist violence, leftist agitation, these people are organizing these things and think it's an accomplishment, it's starting to make me think twice about anybody with HIV AIDS. And that's a goddamn shame. You know that? That's a goddamn shame. But I'm starting to believe that we need to start watching these people, that these people are dangerous more ways than one. I'm serious, more ways than one. I mean, how much more evidence do we need than the Project Veritas videos? And I don't think that was James O'Keefe's intention of exposing all the different uh, gay and HIV AIDS elements within the Democratic Party that is being paid to cause these damn uh, violent agitations and, and, and terrorism. But I, I'm, I'm really starting to be concerned about this. And let me tell you, I know some people with AIDS and HIV. And let me tell you, I'm starting to think twice about even hanging out with them. Because, I mean, I, it makes me wonder. I mean, oh, I, look, okay, you got the AIDS, okay? Tough titty, all right? Your, your life's going to be a little shorter. Why don't you live life up to the fullest and care about the folks uh, in this life so that when you croak and you're an emaciated piece of diseased crap, at least there's going to be somebody that cares about you and you won't die miserable and alone, okay? But that doesn't really even compute in the mind of uh, people that are afflicted with the AIDS that are gay. I mean, they just want to hurt people. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm just talking about what I'm observing here. And I think that we need to have a serious conversation about this. I'm not even joking around. I mean, these people are dangerous more ways than one. And, I, I, I look, I hate to say this, but I don't want to affiliate anybody that's got HIV AIDS anymore. And, I, and it's not because they're bad people, but look at the evidence, man. I mean, how many more times do we have to see people that are obviously feminine, gay, HIV positive looking people, and look, I can tell who's got AIDS and HIV positive. I'm serious. You can kind of tell. You know, they got that disease look and emaciated look to themselves. You know, I'm not, they, they just look like a diseased piece of trash. I'm sorry. You can tell. You can just tell. All right? Why is it that these people want to hurt people or kill people or want to infect other people with the disease and the ailment that they were afflicted with. I think that's sick. I think that's utterly sick. Anyway, folks, I don't mean to go off on this whole AIDS subject, but, man, I looked at those Project Veritas videos, man. Uh, I mean, they were all afflicted with HIV AIDS, man. I mean, those leaders, let me look at them. Please take a look at the Project Part 2 Veritas video. Take a look at it, and all these leaders, they're like, Ah, hi, you know what we're going to have to do? we got to go cause a clusterfuck. That's what we're going to do. Every one of those stupid idiots said the same thing. I mean, telling somebody, uh, well, you know, when you approach Nazis and we, when we outnumber them, I mean, why don't you just give them a throat punch? Give them a little bit of a throat punch. I mean, how can these people do this? I just don't get it. And let me tell you, uh, I'm going to talk about this, about black folks here in a little bit. But you gay people, for as open and as accepting as, as you've made your lifestyles, you are regressing at this point in time with the amount of agitation that you are putting forth. 
Because I'm telling you this right now, I am not anti-gay, I'm not anti-lesbian, I'm not anti-tranny, but this LGBT movement is starting to make me not appreciate or like these people because the majority of them are falling hook, line, and sinker with this idea of hurting or potentially killing people. And the proof is in the part two of uh, the Project Veritas. I'm telling you, man, these people are sick, and they need to be stopped. Anyway, folks, I, I'm, I'm going off keister here. Let me move on. Uh, speaking of social justice warriors, did you hear a man sets himself on fire in front of the Trump Hotel in Washington, D.C.? Did you hear this? I mean, I'm telling you, this is getting more and more scary. Didn't I tell you folks that this wasn't going to end well? Didn't I tell you folks that these leftist lunatics were going to go and take it to a point of terrorism? What did I tell you, man? What did I tell you? So that's why I'm saying, man, I mean, in my personal opinion... We, as those of us on the Trump train and when Trump takes office, and let me tell you, I'm trying to comprise a list here. I'm trying to comprise a list of all the leftists, all the agitators, all the people that were uh, using their celebrity and their status in an attempt to try to agitate civil unrest. I think that we need to start rounding these people up and putting them in jail. And I'm, I'm not joking around anymore, man. I hope that Donald Trump signs an executive order, uh, like some anti-domestic terrorist act, and starts rounding up these pieces of garbage and throwing them in prison. Because I'm tired of this. I mean, what is it going to take, man? What is it going to take? A domestic terrorist really doing some, some damage on the domestic front before we start taking it serious? And then this way it'll justify martial law. I'm just saying round these leftists up, the ones that have been agitating civil unrest. And listen, I'm talking about these celebrities too, man. I'm talking Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, Michael Moore, uh, Rosie O'Donnell. Uh, I mean, all these people that have been trying to agitate civil unrest, utilizing their celebrity to try to illegitimize Donald Trump's election. All these people need to be thrown in prison, man. I mean, what is it going to take? What is it going to take? These people kill thousands of people before we we stop them? We've got to stop them. Somebody, anybody, stop these leftists, man. I'm serious. Stop these goddamn leftists, man. They're going to hurt somebody. They're going to kill somebody. I mean, they have to be stopped, folks. And as far as I'm concerned, I mean, all I want is civility. All I want is a civil society in which we can be safe in and not worrying about anybody trying to inflict damage upon our society because they are a lunatic. Because at this point in time, this leftism, this this far-left progressive liberalism is a disease, and it must be systematically removed like a goddamn cockroach or a rodent. We have to do it, folks. And if the justice system won't do it, and if the government won't do it, well, then by God, we have to do it. Because if we don't do it, look at what they're doing now. They're planning our demise. They're planning to hurt us. They're planning to kill us. I mean, so what are we to do? Just sit back and just wait for them to kill us? Sit back and wait for them to hurt us? All I'm simply stating is these people need to be put in prison. And if the justice system isn't going to do it, then I'm telling you this right now. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised when people on the right finally have had enough and start dispensing justice with extreme prejudice out of their own free will. And only because, only because they were agitated by the same leftist agitators that agitated their leftist lunatics. 
I'm sick and tired of it, folks. I'm tired of it. These leftists think that they can get all dangerous. They think they can get all huffy. Now they think they can commit terrorism. We have to stop them. We have to stop them. And I'm telling you this right now. I am starting to take this a little bit more serious here. And I'm telling you, we're going to have to maybe start figuring out with this list what should be done about these people. Because let me tell you, I'm going to be honest with you. If Hillary Clinton was elected president, unfortunately, I would have stopped the broadcast because I sure as hell don't want to be banned. But I would move on with my life, all right? And what I would do is I would tr- try within a couple of years, once uh, Hillary Clinton was uh, on her way out, try to discuss and talk issues and convince the majority of the American public to vote a different direction. That's what we did during Barack Obama's administration, man. Anyway, we are now in the third and final hour, all right? We are now in the third and final hour of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. Of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, I want to thank you very much for tuning in with me. Before we get started, please follow me on Twitter, folks. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. Politics Ghost. I mean, seriously, man, when when Obama was elected, did we go out? Did we decide that we were going to disrupt this man and try to go out and, and potentially hurt this man? Did we threaten any violence on this man? No, we didn't. I mean, there may have been some stupid freak shows that did, but we didn't have groups of people. You know what I did? I utilized that as an opportunity to convey my ideas. I utilized this show. I utilized other methods, folks, that aren't really known to the people on this show. I did what I could to try to convince as many people that what Obama's doing, what the left is doing, is wrong. And it took us eight years of work for us to convince enough people for us to take back the White House, for us to take back the government, which is what you dumbasses on the left should be doing too, you dumbasses. But no, you want to cause civil unrest, you want to cause civil disobedience, civil disorder, you want to cause riots in the street, burning cars, burning buildings, burning goddamn businesses. That's what you want. And we can't accept that, man. Uh, As American citizens, as people that want to live in a civil society, we cannot accept that. So I thank God that we have... James O'Keefe and other people that are unraveling these plots that are being directed by these leftists, but they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop. They're just going to basically, they were busted this time. They're going to try again. We have to physically stop them. And I hate to say it, but we have to physically stop them. You could take that as you wish. Anyway, let me move on, folks, because we already don't have much time. Once again, a man sets himself on fire in front of Trump's hotel in Washington, D.C., which is, yeah, that's going to basically prove a lot for Christ's sake. I mean, I don't get it, man. What are you all trying to prove? I mean, we went through eight years of Obama. What, what are you all trying to prove? Anyway. Let me go go on here. Did everybody hear that George H.W. Bush is in intensive care and Barbara Bush is also hospitalized? Well, with all due respect, if you want my personal opinion on this, this is black operations in the works. Because lest we forget, folks, one of the big leaders of the deep state that uh, Glenn, Gre- Gre- Glenn Greenwald, excuse me, the uh, leftist journalist, talks about, Uh, WikiLeaks' Julian Assange talks about this is a key leader of the deep state, George H.W. Bush. I mean, lest we forget, this man was the head of the CIA for some time. And moreover, folks, he was a part of the CIA before he became the CIA head, for Christ's sake. I mean, there's pictures of George H.W. Bush literally minutes after the supposed Oswald assassination of JFK and he was out in front of the building that supposedly Oswald shot Kennedy from. I mean, there's pictures of this. There's pictures of him there. You can research it yourself. Google it. 
Google George H.W. Bush JFK, and you'll see the pictures I'm talking about. And on top of that, folks, all right, if you want the truth be told, George H.W. Bush and his cohorts within the deep state were the ones with, of course, the help of Saudi Arabia, with the help of a couple of other factions that, uh, you know, I don't necessarily want to go into, coordinated the attacks on 9-11. Now, you're going to ask, why would he do that if his son is in power? Because, folks, if you take a look at the history of the Bushes, uh, the majority of the Bush kids are idiots. They're morons. George Bush Jr. especially. The man was a drunk until he was 40 years old, didn't know what the hell to do. Uh, Carl Rowe found him and said, listen, you know, I can help you become a governor. I can, I can take you politically places, but you haven't done crap. Which he didn't. He was a drunk until he was 45 years old, for Christ's sake. You didn't do jack. So what did George Bush Jr. do? He ran for governor out here in Texas. You know, he ran on the name of George Bush, which got him elected, which he didn't do that bad of a job out here in uh, in Texas, you know. But uh, still, I mean, it's not hard to screw up Texas. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, we had Rick Perry as our governor. This guy can't even remember his own policies, for Christ's sake. Y'all remember that? And this guy, George Bush, said, hey, I'm a Bush. My name is George Bush. I can run for president. I'm going to go ahead and run for president. And, folks, lest we forget that he, his platform as he was running for president was completely different than what he turned out to be as president. He talked about no nation building. He talked about compassionate conservatism. He talked about a lot of different things in his campaign. And then when he became president, Interesting thing happened, okay? Uh, he tried to basically utilize the, his particular clout as a Bush to basically implement his version at the time. This is pre-2011-9-11. This, this is pre-2001-9-11. Uh, trying to implement his own particular strategies, you know? I mean, I think one of the first initiations that he tried to do was privatize Social Security. There's a couple of things that he did in his first 100 days that he tried to do that literally was completely different post-9-11. Now, the reason he did this was because he was going to try to make another name for himself that was going to outdo his daddy. And, of course, he had uh, Karl Rove to back him up. And lest we forget, folks, the Bush Sr. and Bush Jr. relationship is a very bizarre relationship. It is not close. It is not a close relationship. And uh, further to emphasize my point on this is when Guccifer, not the Guccifer 2.0, but the original Guccifer hacked George W. Bush's emails, and in one of those emails they talk about George Bush Sr. potentially dying, because he was in the hospital at that particular time. And Bush Jr. was like, ah, oh, great. Well, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to write something? I mean, I don't know. Am I supposed to say something? Like, he didn't care. And that's why I'm saying, folks, they never really liked each other. But, of course, George H.W. Bush being the man, all right, being the man, he organized this coup, this deep state coup, right underneath the nose of his own son. And the proof is in the pudding, because on the day of 9-11, where was George W. Bush? He was at some kind of a goddamn elementary school reading My Pet Goat. And when this man was told that the country is under attack, this man did not know what to do. All right. He was looking around to his assistants, to anybody that was there to be told what to do. All right. He did not know what to do. This is not a president. This is not a leader. This is a symbolic leader, obviously, because he didn't have total control of the government as he thought. All right. Now, with that being said, when he didn't know what the hell to do, what was the first thing that George Bush did? He got on Air Force One and flew around for like four or five hours in the air. And not
not to mention he was so scared of coming down that he wouldn't even tell the two fighter jets that were summoned to uh, basically uh, protect Air Force One. He didn't want to tell them where the hell he was going. I mean, that's how scary it was for George Bush. I think that George Bush in those uh, in, in those in in that time when he was told the country's under attack till the time he got out of the school, I think he was crapping in his pants. I'm not joking around. You could see the fear in his eyes, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? I mean, you could see the fear in his eyes. Now, with that being said, folks, all right, he did get some messages, according to reports, that signified that elements within the government, the putsch faction of the deep state, basically sent a message to him on Air Force One stating, and I quote, Angel is next, meaning that his Air Force One was a very inviting target if he did not oblige what the deep state wanted George Bush Jr. to do. Calling the beautifully redesigned 2017 Mercedes-Benz CLA simply a four-door coupe is like describing a world-class athlete as just a good runner. With its sleek profile and powerful turbocharged engine, the CLA offers agility and design that are unmatched in its class. And it's available now at an exceptional price. Why drive any four-door coupe when you could be driving the 2017 Mercedes-Benz CLA? Visit MBUSA.com slash CLA to learn more. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. And to uh, emphasize this point, he was also given certain cryptic codes signifying that whoever was a part of the putsch faction within the deep state of the United States knew the nuclear codes to potentially start a nuclear confrontation just in case uh, Bush or any elements within his administration tried to counteract what was going on at the time on 9-11. Now... With that being said, what was the purpose of 9-11? The purpose of 9-11 was to fulfill the globalist agenda, was to start the war of civilizations, to justify a global bureaucratic system to take control of the world so that it can compartmentalize everybody for supposed peace, safety, and harmony. That's exactly what it was all about, folks. All right? 9-11 9-11 was, was meant to start the war of civilizations so that it can perpetuate down to the point we are now in, which now you've got the globalist consolidating power, the EU, the UN, you've got the Arab League, so on and so forth, folks. I mean, you've got all these international institutions now becoming prevalent. The, the last stand we have at this point in time is Donald Trump. Now, with that being said, I didn't mean to go off on that diatribe about 9-11, but the, it's not an accident that Bush, H.W. Uh, Bush and his wife are in the hospital, and if, I'm, if you want my personal opinion, Bush Sr. is not going to make it out alive. And the reason is, folks, is because some black ops uh, cloak and dagger uh, operation was conducted to take this son of a bitch out for all, all right? Because this man is a very dangerous man, even as old and as senile as he is, he's a dangerous man and is a leader of the established deep state. And for you folks that are unaware of what the deep state is, the deep state is the intelligence community, the CIA, certain apparatuses of black ops defense, uh, you know, so on and so forth. These people that come and watch presidents come and go. So that's why I'm saying, folks, right now we're at a point in time where Trump, his administration, those that he has co-opted, this is a capitalist revolution against the globalist bureaucratic system. And that's why you have elements of the deep state trying to combat Trump at this point in time. And at the same time, uh, that's why they're trying to goat Russia into a nuclear confrontation so that they can justify a martial law situation here in the United States, which they've already done in other countries, folks. I mean, there's a martial law situation going on in France. I mean, it's all over Europe. And you want to know why? It's a consequence of the migrant crisis, which their governments brought the problem. So that's why I'm saying, folks, this is truly why 
George H.W. Bush is in the hospital, in my opinion. I think that, you know, this is how the cloak and dagger capitalists, or excuse me, this is how cloak and dagger politics works, folks. Politics is a dangerous game. Politics is power. And, you know, to eliminate certain dangers, especially Donald Trump and his administration, somebody had to take this guy out. And right now he's on intensive care. He's in his last legs. And I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't make it out of there because he was put there for some reason. And the reason is is because he needs to be eliminated. Because if he's eliminated and Barbara Bush eliminated as well. Let's not forget that Barbara Bush comes from the Walker family. All right? All right? I mean, that's why uh, uh, Barbara is so prevalent because uh, she comes from an affluent family that basically created the Bush name. The Walkers helped create the Bushes. So let's not forget about Barbara Bush, but both these people need to be eliminated to basically kind of offset any potential threats from the deep state that could potentially uh, resemble a 9-11. And you can look all this stuff I just uh, said to you up. You could do your own research. I mean, this is out there. I mean, this is the actual truth. As a matter of fact, I mean, if you take a look at the... Uh, if you take a look at the church service that happens after 9-11, when the Bushes, I'm talking Bush Sr., Bush Jr., Cheney, uh, you know, they attend some church service. If you take a look at George Bush Jr., when he comes back and sits down next to his father, his father reaches to him and gives him a Masonic handshake as if you did well. And... It looked very eerie because it looked as if, you know, Bush Jr. was scared and didn't want to look at his father, and that Bush Sr. was like, all right, you did well, boy. And that, I'm not joking around, man. I, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. Bush, George H.W. Bush is dangerous. I mean, he can have you killed. I'm not joking around. He can have you killed. Anyway, folks, let me move on because we're, you know, we're we're running out of time here. All right, uh, Russia is finally coming back and stating that it was the UK, Germany, and France that were grossly interfering in the United States elections. You know what I mean? <laughs> basis to influence elections besides Germany, France, and the UK. I mean, the UK, obviously, with Brexit and Nigel Farage and that sort of thing. Germany with uh, Merkel basically uh, having dinners with Obama and trying to expand globalism and that sort of thing. France, uh, Hollande's France, the same goddamn thing with his open-door policy, migrant crisis, the whole scenario. I mean, let's be honest. The terrorism that happened because of the migrant crisis at these European countries, you don't think that swayed a little bit of the goddamn electorate in this goddamn country? Give me a break! So it's good to hear Russia finally saying, hey, wait a minute. I mean, you know, if anybody had any kind of sway in the election, it's you dumbass Western bastards. I mean, the U.K. had a referendum, for Christ's sake, that spread over here to the United States. He had the incompetence of freaking Angela Merkel, the incompetence of uh, Hollande, for heaven's sake. So anyway, I thought that was rather interesting coming out of Russia, folks. Let me continue going because we're running out of time here. Uh, Trump's top advisor, speaking of Britannia, okay, and this is why I don't understand why Theresa May is still dragging her feet. Uh, why she still wants to like have some level of partnership with the EU. If the EU is not going to oblige Britannia's trading rules, then screw up! I mean, give me a break, man! Here we have one of the Trump administration's uh, uh, top advisors. Uh, this is a man, Director of Public Liaison and Intergovernmental Affairs, a man by the name of uh, Anthony... Sacramucci, he says that the U.S.-U.K. trade deal could be ready within the first six months of Donald Trump's presidency. 
You know, while M- Teresa Mays over there, you know, whacking her clitoris off like a windshield wiper out of whack, trying to figure out ways to stay in the goddamn EU. I mean, you've got Donald Trump over here stating, hey, we, we could have a trade deal within six months. Screw the EU. Just go ahead and implement Article 50 and stop pussyfooting around about it. Stop pussyfooting around about it, Theresa May. God damn it. Oh, no, we're going to send it to Parliament now. We're going to send it to Parliament. Send it to Parliament? Send it to Parliament? The people have spoken! The people of Britannia have spoken, Theresa May, you (laughs) stupid broad! Oh, no, we're going to send it to Parliament. That's what we're going to do. Yes, yes. Shut up! We're going to send it to Parliament, man. I mean, uh, man, I'm glad I'm not in Britannia. I'm glad I'm not British because I would be pissed off, man. I would be pissed off. Jesus Christ. Give me the mic. I'm serious. I'd be pissed off if I was in Britannia. I mean, how long ago was the Brexit vote, for Christ's sake? And here you got uh, Theresa May dragging her feet, dragging her feet as it pertains to this EU negotiation. I mean, why aren't? Why isn't Britannia just say, you know what, EU, screw you. We're going to implement Article 50. We're disbanding all our connections from you. And if you want to deal with us, you deal with us. If not, we'll go to your independent nation states and deal with them individually, all right? Screw you! I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Teresa, man, I'm telling you, women in power today, that's another thing that's not looking very good. Remember the whole argument about 10, 15 years ago? Oh, if women rule the world, there'd be no wars. And everybody would have a chicken in every pot and a Cadillac in every driveway and all this crap, right? I mean, look at these women leaders now, man. What a bunch of soulless pieces of trash. You know what I mean? I'm serious. Look at these soulless pieces of trash out here. Oh, my God. Anyway, let me move on, folks, because we're almost out of time. I don't want to talk too much about Britannia. All right? Anyway, uh... Let me go off here a little bit as it pertains to the black talking heads that have been talking as of late, as it pertains to the so-called, and I'm quoting these black talking heads, okay? Some idiot named Lamont, I believe his name is, right? His name is Lamont on CNN, called every black man who is meeting with Trump, quote-unquote, mediocre Negroes, okay? I'm not joking. That's what that's what he said. I mean, some idiot on CNN said that with the black folks that are meeting with Trump are quote mediocre Negroes. Now, how is that productive? Being a black man in a supposed racist society, can somebody explain that one to me? I mean, here this black man on CNN is always talking racist, 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 racist. And here he is calling his own black man, all right, his own black brethren, a mediocre Negro. I mean, aside from that being completely backwards as it pertains to progressing the black race, that also opens up the door for folks like me that have to report on this to say the word Negro. You know? I mean, what are you doing, Lamont, on CNN? And not to mention, I don't think uh, Ray Lewis and Jim Brown and, uh, you know, Steve Harvey are mediocre Negroes. I mean, <laughs> I mean what, the, what the hell? Jim Brown, folks, he's been a black activist for like at least 50 years that I can think of, for Christ's sake. Jim Brown was the first black running back in the NFL. This guy was being yelled the word N-word as he would go in and out of every game. 
And you've got the black community calling somebody like a Jim Brown a mediocre Negro? I mean, I can't believe this. And that's why I'm saying, black folk, when you're doing this to yourself, how in the hell can you sit here and look at the white man or look at the government or look at society and claim that it is them that's keeping you down when I, and I will always say that it is you and your own community keeping you down. When you've got somebody who's a talking head on CNN saying that someone who visits Trump, a black person who visits Trump, is a, quote, mediocre Negro, I mean, how the hell does that help the plight and the racism of black folks in America? How does that help? When you are out there agitating the racism, how in the hell does that help? And on top of which, folks, you had this idiot by the name of Snoop Dogg. And let me tell you, man, is there is there a real gangster rapper out there? Can you kill this guy? I mean, aren't you gangster rappers supposed to be busting caps and, you know, uh, shooting each other? Can somebody shoot Snoop Dogg already? I'm tired of hearing this stupid studio gangster Calvin Brodus. All right? And take a look at that guy for real. You know who Calvin Brodus Snoop Dogg is? Take a look at his damn yearbook picture. All right? I mean, what a fake-ass studio gangster. I'm calling you out, Snoop Dogg, you fake-ass studio-ass gangster. And not to mention, you're, you're talking about Uncle Tom's. That's what he called those folks that are either visiting or going to perform at Trump's inauguration. Uncle Tom's. Meanwhile, this is an idiot who knowingly sold ghetto degeneracy to his black community so that he can become a millionaire. Meanwhile, this man in his high school years never, never was involved with any of the garbage that he rapped about. So what does that mean? That means that he pimped out this image. He pimped out this rhetoric out of his ass, exploited his own black folk for his own benefit, all right? And this idiot has the audacity to talk about Uncle Tom's. This is a man who has basically caused the destruction of his own race by highlighting and glorifying ghetto degeneracy, gangsterism. This guy's calling somebody an Uncle Tom? Give me a break, Snoop Dogg. Sir, you're the Uncle Tom. And Malcolm X would tell his people to basically bust caps on you for being a product of white Jewish elitism. Because I'm sure you're doing business with Jimmy Iovine, aren't you there, Snoop? Huh? And if you're not doing business with Jimmy Iovine, who are you doing business with, Jerry Heller? Huh? Who are you doing business with there, boy? So that's why I'm saying, if there's any real gangster rappers out there, you know, like Troy Ave. You know, Troy Ave, man, you're, you're about to go to prison, right, Troy Ave? I mean, he, he already busted a caps. I mean, he just recently got shot. Before that, he shot at a couple of people in the club. Hey, Troy Ave, man, why not you bust a cap in Snoop Dogg's ass, man? I mean, go to prison in style, baby. I'm serious, man. I'm not joking. Freaking Snoop Dogg, you fake-ass studio gangster. Let me tell you something, man. He knows better than to not cruise around with a bunch of bodyguards because he knows some real-ass gangsters will go check his ass. Stupid ass. And and he was scared crapless when Suge Knight was out in the streets. You know, that's why Suge, uh, excuse me, that's why Snoop Dogg was always cramped up in his house and had to do a damn reality show because this stupid little skinny ass would never go out there on the streets, bang that hard shit that he does on his goddamn freaking albums. He's too scared to do it. He's a studio gangster. That's why I'm calling any goddamn gangster that's out there rapping. You want to make a name for yourself, man? Bust a cap in freaking Snoop Dogg, please. All right? Why don't you do us all a favor? Why don't you do us all a favor? I'm not joking around, man. Somebody split this guy's wig, for Christ's sake. I'm not joking! I mean, if you lost a brother to gang violence, if you if you lost a family member, I think that you're within your right, if not to sue this guy, to take a couple of shots at this moron. Give me a break. 
He talks about taking pop shots at everybody in his freaking songs, man. Have you have you heard the Doggy Style album, huh? I mean, that's all he's talking about. I mean, he even does a bit in that stupid album where he pretends he kills somebody because that person checked him about his girl talking to him. I mean, I'm not joking. So anyway, Snoop Dogg, you know, go, go piss off, man, all right? As a matter of fact, if there are any real – I'm not joking around. If there are any real gangsters that want to make a name for themselves, man, bust a cap at this idiot, please, all right? I'm not joking around, man. I'm, I'm tired of Snoop. I'm sick and tired of him. I mean, you know, this is a studio-ass gangster, all right? And then the time that he got busted for murder, you know what? You know why? You want to know why he got busted for murder? It's not because he pulled out a gun and shot somebody. No, he told his bodyguard to pull out a gun and shoot somebody. Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, let me move on with everybody's favorite part of the broadcast, and I'm talking about Radio Graffiti! (laughs) That's right, folks. Radio Graffiti, the part of the broadcast where the spectators become a part of the spectacle. All you've got to do is give me a call right now at 563-999-3791, And when I call on your area code, you've got exactly three to four seconds to say whatever it is that's on your mind. That's why we call this Radio Graffiti, all right? Now, look, we have been having some really, really bad Radio Graffiti calls as of late. I really don't appreciate them. Uh, You know, that's why we only got about 27 minutes left in today's broadcast for Radio Graffiti. And to be honest with you, man, I just uh, I just don't want to hear any more, you know, ridiculous, stupid, uh, pathetic, waste of life calls anymore, right? Anyway, uh, breaking news for folks: a Florida man charged with threatening to kill Trump at his inauguration was a close family friend to the Clintons. Huh? What did I tell you about these black ops, but baby? What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Look at this. I'm about to retweet it right now. Look at that. Sitting one person away from Hillary Clinton. Do you understand this? I'm telling you, politics is serious business. Politics is dangerous, man. It's dangerous. (laughs) Anyway. Let me move on, for Christ's sake. And look, somebody just tweeted at me saying that Snoop Dogg was a member of the Rolling 20 Crip Gang. No, he wasn't. Have you taken a look at his high school yearbook pictures? He was a skinny-looking dork, for Christ's sake, man. What are you talking about? He was a nerd. I mean, there was one instance where he had glasses on. Yeah, I've seen a lot of goddamn gangsters with four eyes. Yeah, a lot of gangsters wearing hipster glasses. As a matter of fact, the glasses that he was wearing weren't even hipsters. They looked like the freaking John Lennon round glasses. He's a freaking nerd, man, all right? Snoop Dogg was a freaking nerd. Anyway, once again, I'm going to take radio graffiti calls right now, but do you see what I just retweeted, folks? I'm telling you, man, this is a a real serious business, man. People are dying. Uh, People are trying to take pop shots. You know, I'm not joking around. This is not a joke. I mean, that's why George H.W. Bush and Barbara Bush, uh, they're not going to make it. All right? They're not going to make it. All right? And the reason is is because, uh, you know, they have to be eliminated. You know, I mean, in my opinion, I think that's what's happening. They've got to be eliminated because – Bush is a dangerous man. He's very dangerous. This is the guy who caused not Well, he didn't cause it, but he was a part of the compartmentalization of the planning of 9-11. Anyway, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to everybody's favorite part of the broadcast. As a matter of fact, thank you, 727 caller. Here is a picture of Calvin Brodus in school. Look at this. this. Does that look like a rolling 20s crip gangster? Huh? Look at that. Oh, Calvin. I mean, this brother looks like the Calvin that they used to advertise in the McDonald's commercials. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that McDonald's commercial? 
Calvin be coming down the hood with his goddamn McDonald's uniform on, and everybody in the hood be like, man, that's Calvin right there. Look at Calvin. That's Calvin right there. He, he worked at McDonald's, baby. I swear to God, that was an actual uh, commercial, and it would only come on during Saturday morning, so I, I, I don't get it. Anyway, right there, you know, does that look like a rolling 20s crip gangster to you? Look at this guy. Does that look like a gangster to you? He's a fake studio-ass gangster that should have a freaking cap busted in him by a real gangster. Jesus Christ. Who the hell else do we have? As a matter of fact, let's go to Radio Graffiti. Do we have any callers, engineer? All right. Well, let's go ahead and get to everybody's favorite part of the broadcast, Radio Graffiti, right now. <laughs> All right. Who do we got here? How about 909 Radio Graffiti? All right, we got a Helen Keller deaf mute right off the bat. How about Anonymous Radio Graffiti? I got a freaking chopper over my house! It's freaking hovering over my house! We look at the Thomas Albert. Get away! Get away, I'm armed! Get away! I'm armed as well. Hambone is destroyed. I repeat, Hambone is destroyed. Man, this freaking African police shit! God damn it! That goddamn African booty scratcher, for Christ's sake! Who is that guy? Who the hell is that goddamn guy? Good God, man! Some freaking African booty scratcher. Give me the mic, man. The goddamn mic. I freaking hate that guy, man. Good God, man. How about another anonymous radio graffiti? Dow Jones Industrials down today 22.05 points. A percentage decrease of 0.11%, closing out the Dow Jones Industrials at 19,804.72 points for the Dow Jones Industrials. We've got the S&P very much today, 4 points, a percentage decrease of 0.18%. Oh, oh, what, what, you think the markets are boring, huh? Who asked you? Who asked you, you son of a bitch? I'm making money. Us capitalists are making money. Son of a bitch. I'm twice a pastor. You stupid, ungrateful bastard. You keep sleeping. You keep sleeping. And I guarantee you, you're going to be shining capitalist shoes, boy. You're going to be on your knees shining capitalist shoes one day there, boy. I guarantee it. Keep sleeping, you son of a bitch. Jesus Christ. Give me the, give me the mic. Give me the goddamn mic. Son of a bitch. Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, here is the video of Calvin here. Here's the Calvin McDonald's commercial that I'm talking about. Doesn't this brother look like Snoop Dogg when he was a young boy there? Look at it, look at it. Get the hell out of here, Snoop Dogg. You ain't no goddamn gangster. I'll give you a bitch slap, and all you do is be like, I don't love them hoes, I'm out the dough. Idiot's so goddamn skinny, he could, he, you know, you know what, Snoop Dogg, you're, you're so goddamn skinny, you could probably hand glide on a Dorito, you skinny, uh, dumbass, uh, studio gangster, idiot prick. 423 Radio Graffiti. Look, uh, what's going on between me and Donald Duck is personal, all right? Now, come on over here. Take your underwears off. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, take your God, underwears off. Now, sit so on my so apple. Oh, yeah. That's right. I'm come on over here. Let's sit on my apple. Oh, all right, now, keep your trimming. That's right. Oh, oh so yeah, keep your trimming. <laughs> oh, my God. I want to play with my balls. Play with my balls. Oh, yeah. Yeah, come on. Take your underwear. Take your underwear. Come in and take your underwear. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Uh-oh, Swimmer. Oh, oh, oh. 
don't know. Oh, you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. is that, man? I mean, what, what are you, y'all imagining giving a bird a stuffing or something? You fruity-ass little freaky bestiality pricks, man. God, anonymous radio graffiti. My name is Cleveland Brown. No, shut up. Shut up. 502 Radio Graffiti. Hi, Ghost. This is Spike the Dragon. Are you interested in joining Twilight Sparkle's Friendship Academy? We have spots for those with wheelchairs. Yeah, real funny, you stupid fruit bowl. All right, shut up. Grow a pair of freaking, grow a pair of balls before you call me. All right, anonymous radio graffiti. I am going to taste my penis. You guys are getting freaking sick. You guys are getting freaking sick. Get this mic out of my face, man. It's gross. That's freaking sick, man. Oh, jeez. Man, that's gross, man. Jesus Christ. You know, uh, give me the mic. You know, uh, y'all are getting really sick now. I mean, when I said that y'all got to get a little bit more creative, a goddamn radio graffiti, I didn't mean this crap. <sighs> anyway, 352 Radio Graffiti. Ah! Guys at the chopper! Guys at the chopper! Guys at the chopper! Yes! Look, hey, hey, that's not funny, man. I was just hearing choppers over my house about 30 minutes ago, man. That's not funny. Everything is a joke to you idiots, isn't it? Everything's a goddamn joke. Good God. Anonymous radio graffiti. I'm, I'm almost tempted, to be honest with you. I'm almost tempted to, like, shove Gurmit the Gay Frog in my anal passage. Ghost, what the heck? No. Ghost, don't do this. No. No. Oh, Jesus. Shut up. Freaky little frog, for Christ's sake, man. 630 Radio Graffiti. Ghost, I sexually identify as an Apache attack helicopter, and I don't like you yelling at my kind like that. They have a right to that airspace, you know? There's no flight. No, they don't. You understand? That's my house! I mean, he's, hey, they're lucky they're still not floating around out here. I was tempted to take a pop shot at one of them, all right? Anonymous Truth radio graffiti. Into Truth will be radio. The end. What the hell? How Templeton took a crap. By Super Smash. One day, Ghost was in his office, talking about politics. Then Templeton wanted to go outside during the full moon, but his master said no. Then Templeton got upset at his master, so he decided to take a crap on a $117 carpet. What are you doing? What are you doing? Wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Templeton, you can't crap there. Stop Templeton now. Don't. Jesus Christ, you can't crap there. So his master called the Stanley Steamer. Yes, I have a total of one seventeen ninety nine even, or with, and that is with tax. Are you kidding me? Get this broader. Get out of here! Are you kidding me? I'm gonna have to pay one hundred seventeen. God damn it! God damn it now! And paid up his one hundred seventeen dollars, and his master told Templeton no more treats for a week. 
and that's how Templeton turned from true capitalist radio into true poopy radio. The end. Yeah, you know what? Shut up, you stupid. <laughs> Man, that turd cost me a lot of money, for Christ's sake, man. That turd cost me a lot of goddamn money for nothing, man. For nothing. I'm telling you, I, st- I still think I should have sold that turd on ghostmarket.com. I should have sold that to- turd on ghost.market. I'm telling you that. I should have, I should have sold that turd. Give me a break. How about anonymous radio graffiti? We got uh, disco waffle radio graffiti. Going going through all kinds of stuff here today. Let's go ahead and clone Templeton. <laughs> oh great. Oh man, Templeton, no. All right, get over there. I don't have a treat. All right. What the hell was that about, for Christ's sake, man? 831 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost. So I was meaning to call earlier about this, but I was at a concert in Santa Cruz, California, the other day. And it was a pretty good show, but right afterwards, some blue-haired, I assume feminist, gets on stage, and she's like, hey, so Donald Trump's going to get inaugurated on the 20th, so we're just inviting everyone to go out and disrupt, you know, the community and let everyone know that you're upset, and I'm just... I, I was pretty upset about this, so I approached her afterwards, and I'm like, hey, just to let you know, I actually voted for Trump. And she was so, like, she didn't know what to say. She just looks at me and with this smirk, and she just kind of cops out, well, that's okay. Like, And then it occurred to me that I'm probably the first Trump supporter she's ever met in her life. It's pretty funny. Oh, man. Now, well, you're in Santa Cruz, I could imagine, man. I mean, l- l- I mean, let me tell you, there ain't too many, uh, you know, uh, Trump supporters out there in California, I tell you that right now. Good for you for telling her a thing or two about a thing or two. You should have told her that blue hair went out in like '82, you know, with the Sex Pistols, you know, uh, or whenever the hell, uh, whenever the hell uh, the Sex Pistols broke up. All right, how about four four three Radio Graffiti? Woo! I got Donna. I'd like to give a big old shout out to my buddies at Comfy Zone, Comfy Dot Zone. I'd also like to talk about how much I hate Mexicans. They really piss me off here in LA. They don't know how to drive. They don't know how to park. They can't use their hazard lights. It, it kills me. It fucking kills me, ghost. And you know, I, I I don't know what to do. I'd also like to give another shout out to Redemption, Anon, Azrael, and all my good buddies at Comfy Dot Zone for all your viewing pleasures. And I'd also like to know how do you feel. Being like Alex Jones's stunt double. Now shut up, you stupid broad. You know what? Get this fat broad. I can hear the fat in your windpipe every time you take a breath. <laughs> Calling the beautifully redesigned 2017 Mercedes Benz CLA simply a four door coupe is like describing a world class athlete as just a good runner. With its sleek profile and powerful turbocharged engine, the CLA offers agility and design that are unmatched in its class. And it's available now at an exceptional price. Why drive any four door coupe when you could be driving the 2017 Mercedes Benz CLA? Visit MBUSA.com slash CLA to learn more. Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. Calling the beautifully redesigned 2017 Mercedes Benz CLA simply a four door coupe is like describing a world class athlete as just a good runner. With its sleek profile and powerful turbocharged engine, the CLA offers agility and design that are unmatched in its class, and it's available now at an exceptional price. Why drive any four door coupe when you could be driving the 2017 Mercedes Benz CLA? Visit MBUSA.com slash CLA to learn more. Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. And she has the audacity to talk about Mexicans for Christ's sake. I can only imagine eating in front of this fat heifer. Looks like something in the wild for Christ's sake. How about six six one radio graffiti? Hey, Ghost. Ever since your endorsement, True Capitalist Pizza is making so many deliveries. We had to get a helicopter. We've been trying to deliver. Oh, All right. Pizza, but we can't. It's this guy again. Here. If you come outside, we can drop it down to you. Oh yeah, you yeah you get yeah you can drop it down to me. Why don't I go to your house instead? Can I go to your house? Yeah. How about if I go to 19 Free Range Drive? Can I go there? Free Range, yes. 
19 oh, free rage drive. Yeah. Oh, what happened? Oh, oh, you didn't like that one, did he? <laughs> he didn't like that, did he, there, boy? Oh, he didn't like that one, there, boy. <laughs> Woo! Oh man! All right, let's let's call his ass back. All right, because I feel hey. He's trying to advertise himself as a pizza place. I'm just trying to give him some some promotion out here. The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please well, try again. Well, shut up. I, I dialed it wrong, you dumb cunt. All right, just give me a break. Excuse my French, by the way. I'm sorry. Good God, I shouldn't be talking that way. I'm cursing like a sailor over here. Good Lord. Anyway, let me continue. Let's call his ass back. I didn't even know it was that moron. Let's give him a call. True Capital is pizza. Hey, hey, is this the pizza place located at 19 Free Range Drive? It sure is, Gus. It is? Can we go out there right now and just, I mean, how about we send you a pizza? Well, we got plenty of pizza, but I, we always like pizza yeah. over here. Yeah, all right, all right. As a matter of fact, I mean, you know, why are you doing this? Now, now everybody knows who you are. I mean, you're, you know, there's a sex offender at this address. I mean, seriously, are you the sex offender? Ghost, uh, we're just, the reason why we're doing this is because uh, you're part of our... Uh, 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 think exactly, that's what I thought. Get this idiot off my show, for Christ's sake. I got eight minutes left. I'm not going to sit here and continue on with this moron, for Christ's sake. I'm telling you, this idiot doesn't think that anything's going to happen to him. That's that's the bad part about it. And you see, that's the bad part about most people, you know. And then when it finally hits them, that's when they're like, oh, I was a victim. I was a victim of trolling. I was a victim of, of fortune. I was a victim. Even though he's asking for it like a damn idiot. Anonymous radio graffiti. Hey, hey, you know what? Shut up. That's not funny, man, all right? Anonymous Radio Graffiti. I've been trolled, and I'm doing this on behalf of both me and who you know is the 661 caller to apologize. What would you say? I can't hear you, man. Show, so I've taken it too far away. I apologize to the trolls, whose precious time I have robbed with my lack of originality. I apologize to El Foxo Loco, who I helped frame for the calls with him. Both of us are very sorry and promise that we will no longer call in to true capitalist radio. I beg you to call I don't know what the hell that's a shut up. That was a horrible recording, for Christ's sake. Anonymous radio graffiti. Get to the chopper! Get to the chopper! Get to the chopper! Shut up about the chopper! 435 radio graffiti. Well, another Helen Keller deaf mute. How about anonymous radio graffiti? Yes! 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 I freaking love child pornography! Ah! <laughs> 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 I'm sure that was Sparta. And let me tell you something, Sparta. It's not like we don't know who the hell you are either, you stupid little bonafide fruit bowl. So if you want to play games yourself, you know, your own little stupid brony network, well, not the brony network, but people within the brony network already gave your stupid ass up, you stupid moron. Maybe call your little volunteer firefighter association over there, see how they like your, you know, uh, promotion of, of, of ah, never mind. You'll, you'll see what happens. 817, Radio Graffiti. Oh, Radio Graffiti. Are you serious? I want to use these fire medicals. I need police right now. Okay, what's your address? You're going to break this up in my house, man. I'm, what's going on? He's in my house breaking all my stuff. I asked him to leave. He has a freaking gun breaking all of my stuff right now. Okay, I'm doing this again. You just broke my glass table. So this is not your house. No, get out of here. Okay, what is your name? Okay, the- Two hours later. Here's that chopper again. What the hell? You know, that's 
not funny, man. That's not funny. You're trying to make me sound like some kind of a goddamn uh, abuser or something, all right? Give me a break. Son of a bitch. 973 Radio Graffiti. Yeah, okay, great. Here we got nobody. Yeah, they ain't going to say a goddamn thing. How about anonymous radio graffiti? Listen, McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. The creature is wanted for a murder he didn't commit. No slurps. He's believed to be dead. And he must let the world think that he is dead until he can find a way to control the raging spirit that dwells within him. Uh, you know what? Shut up, all right? I, I don't think that's funny at all. All right? Don't compare me. Are you trying to compare me to that green man, the Hulk, or something? All right? I'm not a green man, all right? You son of a bitch. Jesus Christ. Look, we got four minutes left. All right? I'm glad. All right, this is already turning out to be a Fruit Bowl Wednesday. Hands down. 609 Radio Graffiti. Ah, Davy Crockett, thank God. It has become clear that I will never make it back to my beloved Tennessee. If I were a stronger man, I guess I wouldn't be here. I would have faced up to my demons instead of using dead Indians and Mexicans as stepping stones back to the Senate. Surrender or die? Why well, start being a hero now? General Santa Ana! General Santa Ana! I surrender! Oh, General! What the hell was that supposed to mean? Seriously, what the hell was that supposed to mean? Jesus Christ, man. Uh, You know what? I'm just, I'm getting so tired of this crap. I'm just going to, I've got three minutes left. Don't be a milky liquor, please, all right? Anonymous radio graffiti. Jesus Christ, another Helen Keller death mute, for Christ's sake. How about anonymous radio graffiti? with the freaking chopper, you moron, all right? 267 Radio Graffiti. Hello, Ghost. It's you again. As you may have heard, today is National Winnie the Pooh Day. To show Pooh Bear a sign of our friendship on his special day, I decided to get him a season's worth of honey. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any regular honey around here, so I checked your woodshed. When I opened the door, I found a bunch of tohu merch, body pillows, copies of the game, stuff like that. All covered yeah, in white. yeah, you wish. You know, you only wish, you stupid, dumb, idiot elephant. All right, shut up. Anonymous Radio Graffiti. What is your confession, my son? Um, every night I masturbate to the same pig of ghosts as a hentai girl riding Trump's massive cock. It's super hot and adorable. One Hail Mary and a 20 in the donation bucket. Next. <laughs> What is your confession, my son? I cheat on Ghost with the engineer on Saturday. So I thrust his anal package, but sometimes, you know, he's kind of retarded, so he doesn't know how to clean his, uh, you know, his butt very well. So sometimes he leaves, like, a little, like, you know, shit spin on my dick. So the next night, when I have gay anal sex with Ghost, you know, I don't wash my dick, and I still fuck him. And right now, Ghost has some of the engineer's shit in his anal package, and I just feel so bad. I recommend this HIV test, then go find your own man. Next. What is your confession, my son? Donald Trump is a megalomaniac blowhard that we do not need in the White House. Well, that's not very nice. Your pet is to tell everyone on the show exactly how you feel. Oh, my. You son of a... Listen, there's the chopper! You sons of bitches! God 